football world was obsessed with the goal-kicking feats of Hawthorne's Peter Hudson in 1971, and understandably so. He went into the grand final against St Kilda with 146 goals and needed only five to break Bob Pratt's long-standing league record for goals in a season. Few doubted he'd do it on grand final day. Looking back, he was a pivotal figure in arguably the toughest grand final of the last 40 years. Hawthorne had finished the home and away season on top of the ladder with 19 wins, three losses. St Kilda had finished second with 16 and six. They had met in a cracker of a second semi, one of the all-time great finals, and the Hawks had snuck home by two points. The great grand final would pit two of the hardest teams in the game under two of the most uncompromising coaches of all time, John Kennedy, who had taken the Hawks to their first flag 10 years earlier, and Alan Jeans, who had coached St Kilda to their only flag five years earlier. It was the great showdown. Watch out for some of the great characters in the game. St Kilda had Carl Dittrich, big, blonde, and at times bad. Cowboy Neil, who had to put his hand up to mine Peter Hudson and in Captain Ross Smith, a rover of class who had won the Brownlow medal and had heaps of courage. Hawthorne missed the talented Peter Knights who was injured but was a star started line up anyway. A tough ruckman in Don Scott, quality rovers in Peter Crimmins and Lee Matthews, one of the game's great fullbacks in Kelvin Moore and alongside him the skipper David Parkin. The good judges said it would all centre on the Hawthorne full forward, how right they would be. But in the end, it wasn't Peter Hudson. This is one of my top 20 grand finals from the WEG Grand Final Collection, the 1971 VFL Grand Final on DVD from Australian Football Video. This is Michael Williamson at the MCG in Melbourne welcoming you to the 1971 Grand Final. St Kilda versus Hawthorne. The umpire is Peter Shields. David Parkin of Hawthorne won the toss and the Hawks are kicking down to the Richmond end. But it's the Saints going into attack. John Bonney with the ball. Tries to screw oh. around but it's blocked. Oh, there's a kick in danger. And the free kick will go to Angus. He takes his kick into the centre of the MCG. The players set themselves almost a Hawthorne mark. The play goes on, ball picked up there, struggle forward, up to the half-forward flank on the member stand side. It's a pretty rugged opening, as you can see. With us today in the Channel 7 commentary point, we have Ron Barassi, Bobby Skilton, and the former Victorian fullback Jack Edwards. Here's a go now for Stuart Trotty, forces the ball wide to the wing position. This is the run of it, however. Keddie's in there too. But it's St Kilda going forward as the ball is driven by Colling. They fly high, it bounces awkwardly. Woo! as Big Carl comes through. It's a free kick going Hawthorne's way. Well, Jack Edwards, would you agree with that? Well, yes, I'd have to say yes, Michael. Hawken uh, coming through with the ball was un unloaded there by Ditterich. Uh, he was going crook, saying it was a fair bump, but the umpire Shields ruling that he was struck too high, and it's Les Hawken, the chap who was under a cloud somewhat during the week. Certainly a vigorous this. tackle. A vigorous tackle, no worries. There's the kick from Hawthorne up toward uh, Martello. He sets himself, spoiled by Lawrence. Lawrence nearly took the mark, in fact. Minot's there, trying to force the ball out. Every player very tense as the opening starts. It's Judson coming downfield. They can't gain position. A throw in to take place on the centre wing position. Ron a very tense opening. Well, a typical grand final opening, Mike. Uh, very scrambly and a few mistakes already being made, which is only natural. Throw in, Minot gets a tap away there. Players go to the ground. It's uh, going to Angus of Hawthorne. Puts his feet into it straight away. Back into the centre of the MCG. Oh, a mark there dropped by Heath, but he recovers well. Heath now down forward. Here's a go. Hudson Murray behind him. Hudson's mark. Hudson's mark. He would be, from that angle, some 45 to 50 yards away from the big sticks. Kicking down to the Richmond end. The rain coming down now at the MCG. Peter Hudson, four goals to go to break the record, but more important, kicking Hawthorne towards a premiership. The kick's on its way. It's a beautiful kick. He's put it through. He's put it through. Two and a half minutes into the first quarter. Bobby Skilton, comment from you. It's a sign of a real champion, Mike. There's no more pressure than you know, that first goal of any grand final. Hudson went back then 
completely confident that he could kick it. The concentration was there. A glorious start to, uh, to the Hawthorne side. We take the opportunity to welcome our friends through CTC 7 in Canberra, TVW 7 in Perth, and TNT 9 in Launceston. And, of course, our very good friends through ADS 7 in Adelaide. Right, let's hear from Jack Edwards. There's the kick. Murray coming out this time in front of Hudson. will take this mark. That, uh, going back to that goal, too, that uh, wouldn't have done Bob Murray's confidence much good. Hudson has had a very good uh, few games on uh, Murray in the last few weeks, but there we see Murray with the opportunity to put them into attack. He kicks down to Ward Minot on the members' wing. Minot shepherding out for Manzi. Manzi's kick isn't a good one. It's up to Ward Breen. He suffers off the ground toward the, uh, the boundary line, and the umpire indicating a throw-in on St Kilda's half-forward flank on the members' side. St Kilda are going toward the scoreboard end of the MCG and the Hawthorne kicking toward the Richmond end. What a crowd, Jack. It's an enormous crowd, Michael. It's a pity uh, for the people this rain had to start. The same weather pattern as last week, but there's a throw-in coming in. Donnie Scott of Hawthorne to take the free kick. Scott on the half-back flank. Umpire Peter Shields indicating to John Bonney and everyone concerned that Scott has to go around and take the kick over the mark. Don Scott, half-back flank on the members' side. Slips slightly as he kicks. This kick travelling up toward Minot. Oh, Minot oh. tried to ship it out, but Marcello, too strong, has taken the mark, centre wing. The kick in towards centre half forward. They fly, Stevenson's pose, ball punch away, a chance for Ma. Stewie Trot, mustering speed, coming through the centre now. A long kick down toward Alan Davis. The pack flying, he can't take it. Here comes Crimmins. Crimmins through half back toward the outer wing. It's up for Trot once again. Stuart Trot with all the ground in front of him. He steadies, he goes to the left foot. He's kicked downfield, but oh, it's slippery out there already. Travis Page couldn't get to it. There's Mars there for Hawthorne. The ball kicked away from him and a throw in to take place. Centre wing, out of side. The 1971 grand final from the MCG. You're watching it through Channel 7 in Melbourne. A throw in takes place. Up goes Hawken there. Minot gets a tap away towards Smith. Almost unloaded Smith, but he recovers. Gets his kick to the half forward. Frank on that outer side. Travelling up to the scoreboard end. Here's Alan Davis. Goes to punch. A lot of nerves out there. Picked up by Barry Breen. Breen across to Davis. Davis now running down towards the pocket. Hooks it around. But it's going to be offline. Out. Punched over. And there'll be a throw. And in the forward pocket for St Kilda on the outer side. Wait for a throw in. Players set themselves. Big Carl goes in there with Scott. Neither gets a tap down towards Bonnie. Knocked away by Park and over towards Crimmins. Crimmins kicks it off the ground, not hesitating. Out to the half-back flank on that outer side. Barr goes up there in front of Trot, but a push in the back goes to Desmar. Barr now manoeuvres his way around Trot. He gets a kick. Oh, it's a nice long one too. To the half-forward flank for Hawthorne on the outer side. They scramble for it there. Lawrence was in that low. Oh. In comes Stevenson. Martello picks up it as a free kick. Going uh, St Kilda's way, it's going to Gary Colling. Colling on the half-back flank on the outer side. Plenty of wind out there too, as the kick goes up towards centre half forward for the Saints. It's uh, taken here by Elliot. Elliot has tackled, however, across to Manzi. Manzi's tackled immediately, but his kick is going towards the pocket on the member stand side. Over the line it goes, there'll be another throw in. Ron Barassi, no pattern of play, play emerging as yet. Uh, not, not at this stage, it's a, just a battle. Throw in, up goes Dittridge, he knocks the ball away, but it's sharp by Crimmins. Crimmins out there towards the centre-half back position. In they come, oh, Lawrence is down on the forward line for St Kilda. Taken down there, picked up by uh, Trot. Trot now tries a short one in here, but it's a bit awkward. It goes across to uh, Theodore. Theodore handballs across here, but over the line goes Moran. Crimmins hot on his tail, and there'll be a throw in on the half-forward flank. I've noticed that Len Hawken has broken down already. He's limping in the goal square. Bad luck for the Hawks. Throw-in takes place. Taken by Smith now. Both Rovers uh, sharking well. Kick down four. There's Big Carl. The ball beats him. Here's a go for Theodore. He uh, mishandles it. He tries a left foot snap. He's put it through. First goal to St Kilda. Right on the seven-minute mark. Into the first quarter. Come in from Ron Barassi. Uh, yes, Michael, that was an equaliser, which was very badly needed. Jack's already pointed out about Hawken. The camera's on him now. I'm not sure whether it's a hamstring or a downfield on the knee or the ankle. If it is, they'll have to use Ken Beck, of course, and that's why the reason Beck was put on the bench uh, for insurance in case of Hawkins' breakdown. We might see a change any moment on this one. It doesn't look too good. Let's hear from Bob Skilton. There's the bounce in the centre. It comes out wide. It's, it's kicked further out towards the wing. John Manzi leading in the race for the ball. Out they come towards the boundary. Manzi being shepherded by Judson. All of ground in front of him at this stage. He short passed across the woods. Oh! Coming in over the top then was Lee Matthews. 
Hit Smith very hard, took the mark. Now he plays on to Robert Day. Day drives the ball down towards the half forward line. Up goes Kevin Heath from behind and takes a well judged mark. He handballs it. Ma. There's Ma. Mark is it right into the square. It bounces and it goes through for one point only. That makes the scoreboard read Hawthorne one goal one, two St Kilda one goal straight. Well, Ma certainly flashed right down from that wing position, Bob. He's inclined to do this. He does. He covers a lot of ground, Mike. Up and down the ground all day long, taking a lot of handballs. Rain still coming down as Bob Murray is prepared to kick out to the outer flank. He it's takes his kick. Not a bad kick. It's floating in towards the players. Up they go. It's a Hawthorne mark to Scott. Beautifully judged mark. Scott. Plenty of courage, this fellow now. Kicks down forward. It's a magnificent kick. Oh, it's a beauty, but a tough line. Through for one more behind. Gee, got plenty of distance. I figure Bob Skilton are getting more distance down that Richmond end, the end of which Hawthorne is kicking. Uh, in the earlier game, Mike, the other end of the ground was a scoring end. Richmond took off the reserves premiership, by the way. Bob Skilton. Here's Bob Murray. Favoring the drop punt, goes wide towards the outer flank. It's Gidrich in the van. He can't hold the ball. It comes over the back where Mine and Lee's in the race. Knocks it on down towards Moran. He picks it up. Steadies and drives the ball in towards centre half forward. But it's all Hawthorne, Hawthorne here. Parkin can't handle it clearly, though. It's knocked away from him. It'll be in the back to David Parkin. Yes. Travis Bays held him without, but he was not in position. Parkin plays on out towards the wing. Up they fly. It's Lawrence from behind. It comes down. Martella grabs hold of Bonnie, who handballs long and wide. Comes out towards Moran, but it beats him over the line and out of bounds, right on the wing position, out of sight of the ground. And Bonnie's also limping at the stage too. There's the throw in. It's Minot and Scott. Up they go. Neither player can get a clear knock. It comes down to Travis Pays. He kicks it further out of the woods, a half forward line, and Alan Davis leads in the race. And it'll be a free kick to Davis in the back. Davis plays on and kicks down towards the pocket where there's Hawken and Gidwich. Hawken's been in a little bit of trouble here, but they play on and it's cleared by Robert Day of Hawthorne. It's a dead set free to Dittrich then, not soon. It did look that way, Mike. Rice and Hawthorne fumbling the ball and takes it over the line and out of bounds. Well, I guess, uh, Ron Barassi, although you've never been a great umpire lover in your football career, I think Peter Shields must be as nervous as anybody associated with the, the grand final. Oh! oh, oh if chance. he wasn't, Mike, there's a chance to see a, an easy free kick. Perhaps calm his nerves down. <laughs> Scott to take it. Scott now of Hawthorne to the wing position on the member stand side. Through comes Big Al, Martello of Hawthorne. Martello down forward. Oh, ha Whoa! Through came Murray there. The ball knocked away. Looks like Murray's in a bit of trouble. They go through. Hudson bowled over. And Hudson's hurt. He's hurt. Well, you saw that. make any further comment. Looks a bit groggy on the race. It does, Mike, but uh, even when he's uh, fully fit, he always looks a bit sluggish and slack. The player wouldn't be filled one bit by this. He's a pretty big player. Tell you what, his no. legs don't look too hot. From no here. worries. I bet he puts it through, Mike. What Let's see whether he does. He's kicked one, Peter Hudson. Up he comes now. He's a bit steadier coming up the kick. Got that one the hard way. He kicks. Oh, it's well offline. It's gone out towards the pocket on the outer side. They fly heat. Oh, oh no mark. Taken there by Judson. Judson out of the half back flank on the outer side. There's a mark. No doubt about that one. Going to Bremner. Let's see what he does. There's Hudson again in the goal square. The kick is now taken. It's going into the goal square. They set themselves. Hudson comes out. Couldn't hold the mark. Here's a chance for uh, Pasenko, but the ball goes over the line and out of bounds. Yes, uh, Jack Edwards. Len Hawkins going off the ground, Michael, limping off on the outer wing as the throw-in takes place. Hawkins is being taken from the ground, and Kenny Beck will have to come on to replace him. There comes Ken Beck now, coming on as 19th man. So the uh, gamble taken by the Hawthorne selectors has not worked. That is regarding Len Hawkins. Twelve and a half minutes into the first quarter. Hawkins off, Beck on. There's the kick in from mine, and up toward Dideric. It's been pushed along the members' wing now, a chance for pays. Oh, they've got the fumbles badly out there. A lot of nerves here, Parkin and Smith. Both dive, neither gain possession. It's picked up by Kenny Beck. It, the kick isn't long, it's been taken by Angus. A big pack forming. Umpire Shields indicating it's a Kilda free kick. And coming out of it is uh, it's Theodore. Theodore of St Kilda from the half-forward flank. 
Davis is calling for a long kick downfield, and there it comes, straight toward Alan Davis. Davis behind Moore, or standing his ground, Davis pushing in the back, and Kelvin Moore will take the free kick. There's another switch. Uh, Lawrence has gone to full back on Hudson. Bobby Murray is limping badly up the field, and then they were, he's coming off. Murray's going to come off, and Galt is going on. Boy, bad luck for both teams. The ball going forward for Hawthorne. Up goes Heath. Couldn't hold the mark. Was knocked away by Neil. But here's a chance for Murray. Fumbles the ball. But again, we find the Hawks backing up. The kick going down forward. Up goes Barry Lawrence. Almost two by to the cherry. But it's Matthews of Hawthorne. Matthews down forward. The mark there dropped by Colin. But he butters up. A chance for Lawrence. Lawrence desperately kicks it off the ground. Over towards Manzi. Manzi and Rice doing battle here on the member stand flank. Manzi tries a short run in, will it come off? Marked by Travis Pays. Well, what a blow to both sides. Murray not off the ground yet. As the kick goes down towards centre half forward, up goes Green, got a bit of an edge out. Picked up by Bustle, Bustle across to Mar. Mars all over the place. Taken there by Hawk. Uh, Park and he's driven into the ground. David Park and he'll get the free. Well, Alan James, what will he do? Ron Barassi, what would you do? Take uh, Murray off? I think he will, Mike. Uh, Injury has been occurred now for two or three minutes and it looks too bad for him to continue. Lee Matthews with the ball. There's Bob Murray there, number six. Hand pass across to Crimmins. Crimmins down forward. It beats everybody over the boundary line. There'll be a throw in, in the forward pocket for Hawthorne, but the ball is being brought back. Or is it? Uh, uh, Hudson's going to take the kick downfield, Mike. That's right. A, a push in the back. And uh, the kick was given downfield. Peter Hudson, you can see the acute angle he's on. This will be a miracle goal if he kicks it. Hudson taking plenty of time. Streamers, Mike. There's no doubt about Peter Hudson. He knows what it's all about, doesn't he? He's saying, how can I kick with the streamers? And I don't blame him. I still reckon a couple of fellas with a rake could clear those off. They're still coming over the fence, though, as he's trying to kick, Mike. That's the whole problem. Up comes Hudson now. He's only 15 yards out. He's gone right across the face of goals, out of bounds, on the full, on the member stand front. There's Bob Murray. Adrian Wright, the physio, talking to him. Bob said, I'm not coming off. I'm all right. Well, it's on uh, Bob Murray's head. The runner's out talking to him now, saying, are you all right to continue, or, or what's going on? The kick now by Cowboy Neal, sends it to the halfback flank. Up goes Big Carl over Beck. That's forced towards Elliott of St Kilda. Elliott running through the centre, kicks up towards centre half forward. Russell couldn't stop it. It goes through to Breen. Breen down for a bit of a run. He steadies. He shoots in at the big ones. There's nobody home. And Scott takes a safe defensive mark. Well, uh, Jack Edwards, a dilemma for uh, Coach Alan Jeans. Well, I would say that he should have to. He should put Pazango to pull back, not Lawrence. But we'll wait and see what happens. Robert Day on the half-back flank, kicking toward the centre of the ground where Elliot had the chance. He can't get to it yet. Judson's there for St Kilda. Can't pick up. Or Pazango using weight and not using it that scientifically. Picked up by Angus. It's a long kick up toward Hudson. Lawrence scores very well. Hudson recovers quickly. So does Lawrence. That's Lawrence being held, appealing and being paid the free kick. Very Lawrence. Peter Hudson in that encounter coming out with the free kick. Sounds like a pro and killed the crowd. I, would, uh, I wouldn't know that, Mike. I think it would just be about 50-50, I would say. Oh, a noise value, Jack. Oh, there's a lot of people here too, Mike, to make up, make a lot of noise. There's the kick down toward Ditterich. Manzi with the run of it now. He can't pick up yet. He's still having trouble. He's juggling it. Uh, good hand pass by Manzi. Could uh, put Theodore in trouble. He was caught. They got it out quickly enough to Bonnie. Bonnie now straightens up. Shoots one to Murray. Murray in the forward pocket. A hand oh, pass to Manzi. Manzi straightens up and misses. Oh. Right across the face of goal once again. Johnny Manzi had the opportunity to steady, put in the short run and steady right up, but let fly and missed. Ron Barassi, it looks as if it's play on at all costs from both teams. Oh, well, in that case, Mike, was the only thing to do. It's a good hand passing, which gave the man clear, trying to steady. He didn't, unfortunately, and Chinchilla failed to capitalise on a very well uh, work opportunity. Trot now with the ball. Stewie Trot would be 55 yards out. Kicking from the flank position on the outer side to the scoreboard end goal. Puts a skip in. Puts it on its way. It's a long kick. It's going to be close. Put me in it close. It's through. It's through. 17 and a half minutes 
into the first quarter of the 1971 Grand Final. Bob Skilton. Has a scoreboard there. St Kilda two goals straight, leading Hawthorne one goals two. Stuart Trott has carried right on from where he left off last week. A dominating player so far in this quarter. There's the centre bounce. Goes down towards Minor, but Martello comes right over the top and knocks a long one down towards Stevenson. He takes it, hand passes on to Bremner. Bremner is pushed offside by Cowboy Neal, who chases after it. He slips and it covers. Ooh. Stevenson of Hawthorne came in, but couldn't take it as he slipped on the, along there. Umpire Shield says, give it to me. Ron Barassi, would that ground be, be very slippery at the moment with this rain coming down the right, surface? It's pretty dry during the week and just the surface would be wet, making it extremely slippery, plus the ball would be the same way. There's Dinnerish is kicked around towards the wing. Oh, a good mark there, taken by Travis Pace. But an earlier free kick went to Barry Breen. Barry Breen right on the wing position. A long kick down towards Davis and Moore. Up they go. Nobody can take it. Davis almost recovers quickly. He plays on. He's grabbed hold of by Matthews. There's Matthews now. It'll be a free kick against Matthews going to Alan Davis. Alan Davis right on the half court. Matthews gets a warning and a 15-yard penalty. Well, this puts Davis in the scoring range, Bob. No doubt about that, Jack. We're making now about 50 yards out. On a very acute angle, but uh, if he kicks like last week, here he comes now. It's going to be short, it's into the square. In front is Kevin Heath, who takes a well-judged mark. Kevin Heath, Hawthorne relief ruckman. Elects to go to the member side of the ground. Comes out towards the wing. Elliott up high, he nearly takes the mark. It's knocked out towards Mark. Mark drives the ball further around towards the half forward flank where it's Crimmins uh, and Judson, and Crimmins will receive the result from three feet. As they've switched wings, Ma has come on to the member stand uh, wing and uh, Rice has gone to the outer wing. Down forward, Hudson couldn't hold it. Teddy comes in there. Teddy battles away, rushes opponents aside. A left foot pass. Hudson, he's pulled it in a one-hander. Hudson is no more than 25 yards out. He's on an angle. Still a fair amount of goal space open to him. He's got one. The rain is pouring down here at the MCG as Hudson comes up. Concentrating. He kicks. He's missed it. It's off the side of his boot. Out of bounds on the floor. Ron Barassi, you think he may be worrying too much, a bit too tight? Well, uh, in contrast to what I said before, Mike, that knock may have affected his leg muscles in some way, but he's put in three poor kicks now and very unusual for Hudson, isn't it? Jack Edwards. There's the ball now up on the half forward flank. Might not doing battle with Scott, but Scott winning out. And with a high kick that's travelling toward the forward zone, Hudson flying in front of Jitterich. He's content to put the ball over the line for a throw in in the forward pocket for Hawthorne. It's only about five yards around from the behind post where this throw in will take place. The scoreboard showing that Kilda enjoying a four point advantage. It's been tapped down. Crimmins missed it, picked up here and hand passed out of trouble by Lawrence. It's out there for Smith to have a go at. Oh, a lot of weight being used there by Stevenson. Coming in is Basenko, picked up here by Smith, who was being held by Martello, and Ross Smith will take the free kick. Oh, I can't buy that. Can you, Ron? Oh, I can buy that, yes. He got him out of the shot of it. I was going to comment on Ross Smith's courage. That's twice in this match he's been flattened and got straight up. He's unbelievable, that bloke. Oh, well, he could never doubt his courage. Oh, it's not just ordinary courage, uh, Mike. It's you know, courage at the highest standard. That's right. Well, he's a Brownlow medalist. Speaking of Brownlow medalist, there's a fellow who's won three, Bob Skilton. But they fly. There's Dittrich and Scott. Scott gets a knockdown. It goes towards Porter. He overruns the ball. In comes Angus. He does the same thing. Tries a hand pass out, but this is. Moran comes along. Drives it right down towards Davison. Moore. Oh. Davis almost pulls down the mark. Nobody can take it, though, and bustle of Hawthorne. Leads in the race for the ball. He doesn't bother to steady, but he finds his man in Leon Rice. Rice again plays on, kicks it at the man. It's fumbled by Ross Smith. Scott picks it up. A short kick down. Nobody can take the mark. It goes towards Matthew. Matthew's in the man. He's fumbling. It's a quick kick out. It goes towards Hudson and Lawrence. Lawrence leading Hudson. Playing right in front. Beautiful piece of play by Lawrence. He bounces the ball once. That is now on the half-back flank. And with a long kick in towards the centre, we'll find Glenn Elliott. Great play by Lawrence. Elliott now drives the ball wide. There's Davis leading in the race for the ball. Oh, Beautiful defensive play by Kelvin Moore. A long reaching, um, just punched the ball away from Alan Davis. Oh, beautiful stuff that, Ronnie. 
fantastic right down from uh, Lawrence's effort to that punch by Moore. Great. Here's the throw in now. Didrich gets the lock. It goes towards Parkin. He breaks away. It's Day who does a poor kick, but it finds the Mara of Hawthorne quickly onto his boot, and it goes around to Basenko, who takes the easiest of chess marks. Neil Basenko with a long kick down towards half forward. Up they fly. Scott just doesn't try to mark. Puts it away. It comes down to Barry Green. He hooks it over. Everybody beats everybody. Murray Beck. Well, Murray has been transferred out of the other end of the ground. He's in the van at the moment. He'll be in the back for Murray. And we might find this until the fullback kicking a goal. Earlier in this game, Bob Murray looked as though he would go off the ground with a bad knee injury. He's been transferred down to the forward pocket and is about five yards out from goal on an acute angle. In comes Murray. Ken Beck on the mark. Murray's uh, offline at one point only. One that St Kilda would have liked to have gotten there. There's the scoreboard. St Kilda, two goals, one. Leading Hawthorne, one goal, two. 23 and a half minutes into the first quarter of the 1971 Grand Final. Jack Edwards. Well, I was surprised that Bob Murray missed that goal, Michael, because he did come to St Kilda as a full forward from Sandringham a few years ago. Although, uh, as we do know, he, he is injured. It's possibly the reason why he did miss it, but... Uh, I wouldn't have been surprised at all to see him kick it. We wait now for Kelvin Moore to kick into the members' side wing. A chance for Maher in the front. No, it's come right over the back of the pack. They're still having trouble picking up this greasy ball. It's very hard to control. That's a big pack forming. Umpire Peter Shields has picked out a free kick out of this, and it's going to Stephen Theodore of St Kilda. The St Kilda forward line, very, very congested. There's the kick now. It's right up to what Alan Davis. Kenny Beck's dropping back with uh, Kelvin Moore. And the spoiling tactics of the Hawthorne defence finds the boundary line for a throw-in in St Kilda's forward pocket position. Hawthorne on 1-2 to St Kilda 2-1. Ditterich gets beaten there. Picked up by Davis. Oh, his kick is way off. Way off line. It's gone straight across the boundary line. And Kelvin Moore will take the result of free kick. This should be a great deal between these two. The two skillful players, Moore and Alan Davis. And at this stage, we know it's early, but Kelvin Moore's doing a good job on him. It's been tapped down by Smith, the chance Rangers. Theodore dives on it, can't get out uh, with it. Picked up here by the uh, skipper of Hawthorne, David Park, and the kick is off the side of the boot, just bounced in play, and a throw-in will take place on the centre wing, on the, on the member side of the ground. St Kilda kicking toward the scoreboard end. Here it comes now, Minot in there, Kenny Beck. Tapped down by Minot, it's been punched on by uh, Vesenko. Still, Rossi Smith still in the van, can't get the kick. Beck picks up, he loses possession just as quickly. It's been fumbled out of the pack, and there's a big pack there. Spazenko gets unloaded. Colleague uh, Judson coming through, and umpire Shields indicating Wayne Judson to take the free kick. On the member's side, Judson will kick towards centre half forward. Barry Breen is looking for the kick. Oh, it's favouring the flank more. Breen coming across. He flies in the pack, can't take it. Picked up here by Matthews. He lost it just as quickly. Theodore dives on it. An umpire shields indicating a free kick could be taken by Lee Matthews of Hawthorne. Gombero sees some desperate tackling going on. Yes, Mike, with both sides specialising in desperation and even play. A close play, and it's going to be hard to, uh, to kick goals quickly and score in a free manner. Hawthorne now going forward down towards Hudson. Oh, good lucky to get out of that, uh, St Kilda. Hudson uh, got it in the back, but he kicks down and he kicks through. There's his second. A fantastic kind of recovery. Fantastic recovery. Oh, Bob Barassi, what have we got to say about that? What have we got to say about that? Well, that was a great kick. I think it matched his first kick, although under different conditions completely. Conditions in which he had to... Uh, had the pressure on him as far as time was concerned, but it still went straight to the middle, Mike. Right? This is where Hudson is unbelievable. His accuracy is, well, he, he failed in a few ones before, but that kick was one of the best. Couldn't 26 and a half minutes into the first quarter of the 71 grand final. Hudson, two goals to his credit so far. It's St Kilda going forward now. Ball knocks the ball away. Theodore comes in for St Kilda. In comes Parkin of Hawthorne. Hayes is there for St Kilda. In comes Stevenson of Hawthorne. Oh, golly, it's like calling a horse race. They're coming from all directions. And Elliot of St Kilda will take the free at centre-half forward. Elliot's kick is going deep down into the forward zone. It bounces awkwardly. A chance for Green. He's in awful trouble. Takes the ball over the boundary line. Robert Day picks it up. There's no shadow of doubt it was over. Jack Hill, the blind miner, could have seen that one. That's Throw in. Up goes Dittrich with Scott, taken by Calvin Moore. Hooks it around very quickly. Haven't got much time to side up where you're going to kick under this pressure. Through they come once again. 
taken by Cohen. He slips over the boundary line with the ball. He's tackled over the boundary line. It'll be a throw. And on St Kilda's half forward flank on the Mender stand side. Throwing takes place. Scott knocks it down. Mark comes through with the ball. Look at this for congestion. Picked up by Martello. Martello obviously is on the ball now. Unless he's roaming wide. The kick goes down centre half forward for Hawthorne. No mark there. Comes to the ground. They're battling for it. There's a chance for Jacobin. Oh, there's a Hawthorne player down behind play. It's over the boundary line. There'll be a throw in. It's on Hawthorne's half forward flank on the member stand side. Jack Edwards. There's Minot now. Uh, getting pushed out by Martello. And Ryan Minot will take this free kick half back flank. Scoreboard reading 2-2 two, two to 2-1 two, in Hawthorne's favour. One point the difference at this stage. Why not half back flank looking for somewhere to uh, direct the traffic it's from the side of the boot? It's favouring Ditterich. Ditterich getting in front. He can't judge it properly. Picks up very quickly. A hurried kick down toward the flank. Finds Bonnie. Bonnie having trouble picking up. Ball coming out to challenge. Four bit of strength being used here. Umpire Shields quick to see it. And uh, it's against Alan Davis before that one of Kelvin Moore. And Kelvin Moore will be. Uh, all at once, Robert Day will take the kick. A lot of uh, weight being used very, very freely. Martello flying. Can't hang on to the greasy football. It's been punched away by Martello. Up toward the centre wing. Kenny coming in. He's getting a fair bit of treatment there uh, by Colling. He put, uh, puts it out to Ma. And the ball's still in play. The umpire watching it very closely. Colling hooking out. Uh, hand pass, but umpire Shields has ruled a free kick to Colling of St Kilda. Gary Colling on the centre wing. Favouring slightly the half forward flank. Be looking for a mark from Breen or one of his teammates further downfield. That's Ken Beck flying behind Breen. Davis with the opportunity. It's been tapped on by Rice. It's been kicked out by Scott. The chance for Angie. Angie picks up and the sirens up. The end of the first quarter of the 1971 grand final with the scoreboard reading Hawthorne 2-2-14. Two, two, St Kilda 2-1-13. At the MCG, it's umpire Peter Shields bend the ball, starting the second quarter of the 1971 Grand Final, St Kilda and Hawthorne. The scoreboard at the start of the second quarter, Hawthorne 2-2, St Kilda 2-1. Hudson has kicked two goals for the Hawk. There's Bustle pushing the ball out of trouble. In the second quarter, we'll find St Kilda down to the Richmond end. Big Carl Dittrich comes in, gets one in the back and will take the resulting free. He's on the half-forward, flank on the outer side. Kicks in towards centre half-forward. Plenty of opposition now. Woo! That's getting it tough. Why not got it the tough way? And Don Scott, a redoubtable opponent, plays it pretty hard. But Minot takes his kick down forward. Players come out to meet it. It bounces awkwardly. But here we find uh, Heath uh, relieving the pressure as he kicks down towards the centre. Players uh, miss the ball completely. In comes Rice there, and Rice will get the free kick for Hawthorne. We welcome to our microphone, along with uh, Ron Baresi and uh, Bobby Skilton, Jeff Parrott's a former number one umpire. Jeffrey. Thank you, Michael. And Leon Royce takes the kick towards full forward. Hudson's up there, and so too is Lawrence. No mark. It's on the ground. The players go in there. Judson's in there. The ball's on the ground. Martello's in there, too. It looks like a ball up from Peter Shields. Peter Shields to ball it up only 20 yards out from goal. Hawthorne kicking towards the score, but in it comes a tap down towards Crewens. Crewens fires. It's a goal from Peter Crewens. Oh, it was Brian Minor who actually got that knocked down and it was sharp beautifully by Peter Crimmins. One minute, 20 seconds into the second quarter. A valuable goal, Ron Barassi. A very valuable one, uh, Michael. One that Brian Minor will see in the replay tonight on Channel 7 regret that very much because it went straight down the throat of his opponent and a certain goal resulted. Rob Skilton. There's the ball at centre-half forward for St Kilda. Barry Boone comes out with it. Borks turns runs onto his left foot and drives it long and down towards Moore. It goes over the top of Moore and Davis through and one point to St Kilda. A Bobby. long kick by Barry Green then. Yes, Ron. Bob, I don't like to move a Murray into a pocket. It means that Carl Dittwich and Brian Minot are on the ball together. Well, you know, two big blokes, it's not good. He's either fit or he's not fit and he should be right in the thick of things. Out it comes. It's Scott in the van. He, it's knocked down to Grimler of Hawthorne. He drives it straight down the centre of the ground. It's punched away from Brasenko by Big Martello. The crowd screen for holding the ball, but it's play on there. It comes out to Rossi Smith. Matthews comes through and knocks it down towards Day. Day drives it out towards the half-forward flank in the open spaces. There's nobody there. It's running towards the boundary and beats all players. 
over the line on the half forward flank for Hawthorne. And I'm sure our very good friends through CTC7 Canberra, TVW7 in Perth, TNT9 Launceston, ADS7 in Adelaide will be having a bit of a giggle about Melbourne's weather. The rain is simply pouring down, absolutely pouring down. The ball is in the centre of the MCG. Through comes Bustle of Hawthorne. Danzi uh, tracks it away from him in soccer fashion. St Kilda going forward. David Parkin is there, couldn't hold the mark. Bonnie and Parkin going for it in the pocket. Parkin uh, on top of the moment but loses that supremacy. Davis dives on top of the ball, comes out. Tackled by Parkin, forced over the boundary line. And uh, Alan Davis of St Kilda looks to the umpire, Peter Shields, as if to say, I should have had a free. A throw in. Players move in, Dittrich there. Uh, Scott goes over the top and it's Dittrich is free, all right. The big fella is about 50 yards out. He's on an angle, kicking from the outer flank. It's on its way. It's a beautiful kick. Forced through for one behind. There he is, big Carl. I don't think the uh, wet weather and greasy ball would help him to a great uh, extent on Barassi. Well, I wouldn't say that, Mike, because he's not a bloke who relies upon a dry ball to mark. He's not a great mark in here, so I don't think he'll you much. He still can show his life, which he's famous for. All right, expert opinion from Ron Barassi. It's in Kilda going forward. Travis Pay's got his boot to the ball. A chance for Rice there. He's almost in the back pocket, and Rice will get a free kick. Rice of Hawthorne now. Puts his boot in it. Drives to the wing position on the member stand side. Oh, up went Martello high in there. Couldn't hold the mark. The ball forced to the wing position proper. Over the line it goes. There'll be a throw in. Jeff Crouch right in front of the member stand. What a game this is because it's so close. And there's the throw in. And the bat big men battle. Scott up and Minot's back. There's no doubt about this one. Ryan Minot to take the free kick. Scott had one hand on Minot's shoulder. And that's all there was to it. Minot to take the, Minot to take the free kick. Porter going over the mark. Come back, boy. That's right. Point up now, kicking towards centre half forward. Not a good kick, but Smith is in the way there. Ross Smith nips in and takes the mark at the centre half forward position. Ross Smith, the courageous skipper of St Kilda, drives towards full forward position. The pack set themselves. Oh, Davis goes up. No mark, I don't think. Or oh, is it the man in front? Goes to Moore. Yes, Kelvin Moore takes the mark in front of Davis. Davis went from behind. Got to get in front in these conditions. It's very wet out there. Got to get in front. Moore playing very well at full back. And his kick coming around the member stand side. Heath goes up. Big knock over the back though. In there comes uh, Moran. It's in the, right near the boundary line. He slips over. Leon Rice whips in. It's still in play. Leon Rice keeping in play. Ross Smith's in there. The skipper for St Kilda. He's over. He's dragged it out. It's over the line. Yes, out of bounds. And he's uh, the boundary umpire is going away to pick it up. It's out of bounds right in front of the member stand, the smoker stand on the member stand side of the ground. A half forward flank. Hawthorne kicking towards the scoreboard end. St Kilda kicking towards Richmond's end. The ball on the half forward flank. Hawthorne's end. Beck's in there with Minot. Up they go. Minot gets the knockdown. Angus can't get it. Rice now. The red headed Rice kicks a left foot kick towards centre half forward. The players are belly the ball. In the van is Trot. So Sue is Hudson. Hudson misses it. And through comes Lawrence, the Taswegian. The two Taswegians on each other. Lawrence and Hudson. They've got wet feet over there. And the ball in the meantime has gone out to the outer flank on the outer wing. Robert Day comes in. And the ball is over the line, out of bounds, right on the wing position on the, on the outer side of the ground. Bob Skilton. In comes Stuart Trott with a long knockdown. It's Bustle of Hawthorne who Ooh. almost takes it. But he forces the ball in front of him. In doing so, gave a penalty kick to Stephen Theodore, the St Kilda half-forward flanker. Theodore has already kicked one goal in this game. Right on the wing position. Theodore, the kick in towards centre half forward. You see there, Dittwich back. Dittwich tried to knock it over. He comes down and recovers. It's Parkin who comes in. He can't take the ball clear. It's Davis almost in the van. In comes Gremner who knocked over Bonnie, but it's play on as Parkin picks the ball up. Kicks the ball wide towards Matthews. He can't hold the ball. It comes down. Nobody can pick it up. Matthews recovers, but in comes David Parkin backing up uh, young Matthews. Parkin does a poor kick. It goes in towards Glenn Elliott. He again fumbles. It's hand passed over by Robert Day. Nobody can handle it cleanly at the moment, but it's kicked right down towards the half-forward flank with Heath does a, a diving mark, and it's paid. Kevin Heath right on the half-forward flank. Around he comes for, towards Hudson and, Matt, and Lawrence. Lawrence makes it away, but Crimmins comes in. Crimmins kicks the ball long. It's Rice going, leading in the vein. Rice oh. oh, it, takes a chest mark. He couldn't quite hold it. Looked an easy one for Rice, but he fumbled right, easily within kicking distance. Actually, by the time he got to the ball, he was in a pretty awkward position, the angle of his body. I'll grant you that, Mike, but they're the ones you should mark. It's Porter who comes in. Porter 
kick straight into the man it was Minot and it's over the line and out of bounds in the forward pocket for Hawthorne very close to the boundary the point post I should say in they come up goes Minot and Martello it's not wide it goes towards Elliot Elliot kicks it back the wrong way but it's Kevin Neal who comes in to take the chest mark and relieve the pressure on the St Kilda side Don Barras here a truly pressure game Yes, Mike, it's not a good game to watch because uh, it's close conditions, close tackling and all sort of fumbling, of course, because of the rain. But still... Not good to watch, you're joking. It's not good football to watch, Mike. Let's face it, it is beautiful. Yeah, it's a struggle to watch. Oh, of course, and this is that's why grand finals are always great. Then it comes to Robert Day. Day now drives forward. Up they go. It's Cowboy Neal once again, making a very timely, safe defensive mark. Well, I don't know what you football purists want. I reckon this is exciting as you'd ever find anything. Well, almost anything. There it goes. It's knocked away by Diffridge over the line. And there'll be a throw-in between the wing and half-forward flank for, uh, for Hawthorne on the outer side. Up goes Beck. But Diffridge gets in front, tries to take it. Couldn't quite hold it. Trotter's on top of the ball. Trot forces it out here. Picked up by Travis Pays. Pays to the half forward flank on that outer side. Davis is a mile out of uh, ground there. Taken by Bustle. Bustle of Hawthorne screws it around. Back to the half back flank on the outer side. Over the line they go. There'll be a throw in. Day just couldn't keep his feet. And it's on St Kilda's half forward flank. They're kicking down to the Richmond end. Big Carl goes up there with Beck. It comes down here towards uh, Crimmins. Crimmins gets a hurried kick in. As Ron Brassie pointed out, it isn't pretty football, but... Oh, <laughs> look at that. How'd you like to be the meat and the sandwich? <laughs> oh, Jeffrey. <laughs> be a, be a nightmare. What? It'd be a nightmare for an umpire. This I don't know about Ron Brassie. This is where you, you make up all your mistakes in these sort of games, and by gee, you make a few of them too, and it comes out here, St Kilda goes forward. And the green going, and it was bustled. No one takes it off. Park and tries. Dignitz comes out with the ball. A right foot kick in the goals. What is it? It's a free kick. A free kick. Hawthorne's <laughs> way behind the play, it must have been. It's going to more. Let me ask you this, Jeff Crabbs, the former number one umpire here in Victoria and Australia. Is Peter Shields doing a good job? An excellent job so far, Mike. An excellent job. One ball up in the first quarter. Every decision, the first one off the cap, the first cap off the rank. First David, thought in his mind. David Parkin taking the free kick. Kicks to the halfback flank on the outer side. Why not knocks it away here? Knocked uh, right over the boundary line by Robert Day and a throw in on St Kilda's half forward flank on that outer side. Bob Skilton, struggle. And, oh, great struggle, Mike. Here's Beck, number four, and Minot of St Kilda. Minot gets it over towards Elliot. Elliot is piss, pushing them back, but it's missed by umpire Shields. Here they come, and he gives it too high. Travis Pays, the St Kilda ruck rover, will take the result in free kick. Pays, close to the centre of the ground. Comes across towards centre half forward. It's Green, the van. He can't hold the mark. It comes down towards Rice. There's Hawthorne players everywhere, but Robert Day picks it up and drives it out towards the half-forward flank and Lee Matthews, who takes a fine mark, was about to play on, but steadies and goes back. On comes Matthews. Kicks it long. It's down towards Kevin Neal, but he falls just as ever, is about to take the mark. It's a kick out towards Desmar, almost drops the mark. He plays on towards the wing. Kicks it, hooks it right in towards a pocket position. There's three St. Kilda players at Hudson. It's not wide by Kevin Neal. Here we are now, Porter who's in the van, he can't get it. Fasago almost Ooh. picked it up, it looked like a push in the back, but it will be a hauler. It was a push in the back, but Porter pushed him, it was a Hawthorne player pushing a Hawthorne player. There's, There's the up. bounce of the ball. Martello gets it down, it comes to Bonnie. Bonnie does a poor kick out towards Crimmins. Crimmins recovers, swings around, a left foot in towards Heath Hudson, knocked away by Lawrence, comes down towards Kenny. Here's Bob Kenny now, he gets it, puts it down on the ground, Matthews comes in, hooks it over into the goal square. Up they fly, nobody can take the mark. It's Colling who comes in and clears for St Kilda. Leon Rice, the Hawthorne wingman, comes in, fumbles the ball over the line and out of bounds on the half-forward plate. Ron Barassi, it's noticeable the players are starting to run before they've actually got the ball in their possession. I think the ball's so hot, Mike, and the pressure's so uh, quick and fast, <laughs> this is only a natural thing to happen. That's right, the ball kicked by Elliot now to the half-back flank for St Kilda on the member stand side. Will that mark be paid? He's paying it. Paying it to Scott, would you have paid it, Jeff Crowd? Of course, sir. Of course I would have. If he didn't pay the mark, he would have paid the free kick the second one up anyway. Alan Jeans, Jeans wouldn't Alan have. Jeans is up his seat. <laughs> it wasn't Mark. Oh, it was, Ron. Oh, come on. He Here's paid John the free Scott. kick. 
kick Go. now from Scott. Goes into the forward zone. It's taken here by Basenko of St. Kilda. He goes right across the ground to the flank position on the outer side. They race for it. In comes Trot. Trot tries a long hand pass. Good football over to Smith. Smith is chased by Parkin. Smith kicks it off the ground. It's going down into St. Kilda's territory. Davis played cunningly, but in comes Parkin. He's taken to the ground. It's picked up by Kelvin Moore of Hawthorne. Four now to the wing position on that outer side. And the mark taken there by Crimmins. Little Crimmins now puts it up towards the forward zone there. The ball trapped. It's kicked forward there by Day. Pushed away. A chance here for Bonnie. Oh, ducks in courageously. Gets his kick. Missed by Crimmins the mark. In they come. It's Parker once again. He's taken to the ground. Holding the ball. Don't agree with that one. Don't agree with that one. But still that. Uh... I agree with you, Jack. I don't think it was a free kick, but penalised and killer because they already had the ball to go away with anyway, so it's worse off for them. Fair enough, but David Parker never had the ball in his possession that case. Pretty close to it. <laughs> Taken by Ross Smith, the kick. Down into the forward zone. There's Davis completely surmounted. Up goes Scott. The ball comes to the ground. Bustle there. Couldn't get away with it. More punches it out towards Bremner. Bremner of Hawthorne picks up out to the halfback flank. They set themselves. Up they go, and there's a good mark taken by Robert Day of Hawthorne. Bob Skilton. Here he is, Day on the half-back flank. Ross Smith on the mark, being called back by Shields. Away they go, down towards the half-forward flank. It's Martello, and Basenko at the back almost takes the mark. Basenko recovers quickly. Forks, turns, in a lot of trouble on this, on this occasion. The pack form, nobody can get it clear. And umpire Peter Shields said, I will ball it up. Almost 15 minutes into the second quarter and only one goal has been scored. There we go. There's the, the knock. It goes down to Kevin Neal. Neal comes out. He's bumped by Martello. And Neal kicks it wide over the line, out of bounds. And the free kick will be taken by Desmar. There's Desmar right in the centre of the screen. Right on the wing position. Ma naturally in this rain using the punt kick. Up they fly. Travis Bays almost took the mark. It's played on by Moran. Kicked off the ground by Vasenko. The up bell now prices it went over on the full. And Maher again will take the result in three. Maher kicks the ball long and wide. It's out towards Hudson. Almost takes the mark. Cannot get it clear. Kevin Neal comes in in defence for St Kilda. Steady. Drives the ball towards the wing and Stuart Trott. And Trott takes a good, a good mark. Stuart Trott on the wing position. Drives it in towards centre half forward. Green in the van, right behind. Bustle in front though, knocks the ball down. In comes Elliott. Almost a free kick. He hand passes out to Bonnie. Knocked away by Bustle. He flicks it through his legs. Bonnie recovers first though. And in comes John Bonnie of St Kilda. Kicks it wide to the half forward flank. And Robert Day, the Hawthorne half back flank, and takes a solid mark. Don Barassi, it's a battle of the defences. Can you see how either coach can get that ball further forward? Not really, Mike, because it's so close and it's so hard and the conditions are so difficult. I think it's going to be a, one of those close, hard, tense, exciting struggles all day with every goal important. And that was the goal. Of, there's only been one goal scored this quarter, and those sort of things are going to be very, very important. Well, the full forwards are hardly being fed, are they? It's impossible, Mike. It's right. impossible. Bad day to be a full forward, I'd reckon. Jeff Crouch. And talking about Days, Robert Days got the kick on the wing position out of sight of the ground. There goes Days, kick towards the half forward flank. Up they go. A punch down to the ground. Judson comes in. Handballs it further afield to Ma. Ma's kick though. Goes over the line on the full. Was Touch. it touched? Yes, it was touched. And there'll be a throw in on the half forward flank. Hawthorne kicking towards the scoreboard end. Up they go. Martello's in the big Martello number four and he gets the knockdown. Comes back to him. He can't get his kick in. Through comes uh, Angus. Angus. And it goes through to Basenko though. Basenko picks Whoa. up. Neil Basenko, by Gia's hard Saw play up there. there. Up they go. No mark. It's on the ground once more. This is where the, the game is. On the ground today. The wet and the ball comes out towards the weakness. It is a race for the ball. And Porter comes up. It's a knock at the draw. The knock at the draw. It's a free kick to Moran. Porter had an open field in front of him. Away he was going. What do you mean, knock at the draw? Was yeah, it a free kick or not? I couldn't see, but it was Porter, to tell you the truth, Ron. Couldn't see possibly what it was for. Free kick, I don't think. Okay, he's got it though. Jeff Moran kicking towards centre half forward. Up goes Heath. Beautiful mark by Kevin Heath at centre half back over Alan Davis. Heath, centre half back. Left foot, torpedo, punt kick coming towards centre half forward. Up they go. It's on the ground once more. This is where it's going to be most of the day. Moran picks up, kicks it towards the wing position. There's a race for the ball. Here's Bob Murray. 
He's in there, number six. He's a fullback normally, but he's playing in the forward pocket. Scott's in there too. Could be holding the ball. Oh, oh goodness, there's a oh, right. What's wrong with that? the ball? Only a free kick. Aren't you allowed to go for the What's ball? What's wrong with that? He was Murray's free kick. No no matter what you fellas think. Okay, down forward it goes. Up goes the big Carl Dittrich, but it comes to Bremner. Bremner now, back in towards the centre of the MCG. The excitement is high here in the 1971 Grand Final. Tempers are frayed everywhere. As Trot comes out with the ball, Trot tries a short one in the bunny. He marks, but just, and big Carl comes in to protect him. He marks this at centre-half forward, Mike, and that's where uh, Green's been shifted from. Alan Davis is out the centre-half forward. Bonnie's kick now, down towards Barry Breen, who's at full forward, but have a look at it, completely swamped. Ross Smith comes through, can he get his boot to it? No, forced through for one behind. That makes the scoreboard now read Hawthorne, 3-2, 2 St Kilda, 2-4. Nothing much in this. What a tight grand final it is as Calvin Moore kicks out to the outer flank. Up they go, no mark. A hand pass across to Dittrich. Dittrich gets his kick in as Matthews comes in. It's Rice now with the ball. Rice is almost in the back pocket for Hawthorne there. Kicks to the wing position. It goes over the wing position. Trundles its way up to the half forward flank on the member stand side. A kick there over to Moran. And Page yelled out to him, you're right. Umpire Peter Shields, a tough job to do, I'd reckon, today, under these conditions. The rain's still coming down. The kick swinging into what centre half forward for the Saints. It's almost taken on the half volley by Manzi, but he missed it, taken by Bustle. Bustle now back towards the wing position on the member stand side. Porter just couldn't handle it. It's forced over the line. There'll be a throw in. Bob Skilton. A throw in on the half forward flank for St Kilda, member side of the ground. Up they go. It's back and why not? Minot gets it over the back, it goes towards Bremner. He can't handle it though, and Ross Smith whips in. Kicks it down towards Don Scott, and Scott takes a good chest mark. What do you think of Bob Murray down there, Ron? I think it's ridiculous, uh, quite frankly. It's three or four times now his inability to carry the injury has been proven. His opponent has got an easy kick. We saw Matthews take a fine mark on the wing position there. He now drives it in towards centre half forward where Barry Lawrence, with nobody on him, takes an easy chest mark. Bob Murray's coming off. Murray's coming off. And Stephen Ray is coming on. Murray's coming off. Here's Stephen Ray. Here's Bob Murray. What a wonderful player. What bad luck for him. But here's some killer going forward now. The ball's at centre half forward. Green comes in. Almost unloaded by oh. Could be a free kick for Barry Breen. What do you think, Jeff Crouch? There's no doubt about that whatsoever. <laughs> Breen, who hasn't been in the play much, but he's the type of guy he's likely to cut loose and kick three or four goals at any minute. He's a good 70 yards out. It's uh, dropping on the edge of the goal square. They fly to the ground. It comes. It's close to the boundary line. Ray comes in. So too to Smith, but it's over. There'll be a throw in. Bad luck for Bob Murray. He's been a credit to the game, still is. Up goes Dittrich, tries to take it from behind. A struggle. Dittrich is still going. Look at that fellow work. Over the line it goes in the forward pocket for St Kilda on the outer side. They're kicking down to the Richmond end. Bob Murray, how disappointed he must be. Down to the ground it comes here. In St Kilda's scoring zone. Theodore now tries a hand pass. Taken by Manzi. Manzi snaps. He's put it through. Seconds, 21 minutes, 12 seconds into the second quarter. Ronda Rassi, comment. The comment on the hand pass was a fantastic piece of work. I mean, the only guess where the player might be, but it was an educated guess, and it came off with a well-judged goal. On the move of Murray, I think it might be a blessing in disguise because Lawrence has done a magnificent job on uh, Hudson so far. And when you think about it, it's very hard to fit Bob Murray in anywhere else but fall back. Ball going forward now for Hawthorne. There's Lawrence doing battle with uh, Peter Hudson. The ball kicked away by Judson. Up towards the centre. The ball knocked away now. Oh, over goes Minot. He'll get the free kick. Here's Jeff Crouch. 
Well, there's no doubt about that one. Minot at the true centre half back position. Course and killed a Martello on the mark. Minot kicking towards centre half forward. There's up there they go. Beck punches it down to Scott. Ooh. Scott further afield in the meantime comes oh. somebody else. Angus held but not in possession. Clowns at all. Away they go. And looks like Peter Shields. There he is. He's oh. going to pull it up. What about our director, Al Potter, and our cameraman? They were right onto that. They sensed something was going to go on. And it damn near did, I can tell you. Jeff. They don't miss much. And here goes Barry Green. In there with Moore over the back of him. And Green will come out with a free kick in the back. Green can kick this one. Green's only be 65 yards out. He's directly in front. Moore is directly in front. I reckon Green can kick this one. Another ball's wet. St Kilda now 3-4 to Hawthorne. 3-2. St Kilda two points in front. Green comes up. The kick's on its oh, way. It's yeah. a beautiful looking kick. Oh, ho. Three minutes into the second quarter, and the scoreboard reads Hawthorne 3 2, St Kilda 4 4. That was a magnificent kick, Ron Barassi. It was, oh, he is a magnificent kick, particularly with a torpedo which he used then. Mike, I think this is the first time during the whole match, almost two, uh, two quarters, that two quick goals have been scored in succession by the one side. I wonder if it's going to be a break within two minutes of each other. Up they go in the centre, the ball knocked away, it's going up into Hawthorne's territory. Goal almost taken by Heath, I'm about to say taken, but he didn't get it cleanly. Kicked by Ma. out comes Hudson, oh, in the back, in the back, there was no shadow of doubt. He played for it, he swung into it, he played for it, but still in the back. Look, at the, it's still in the back, Bob, now it's in the back. Uh, it is, look. Kicked by Ma. out comes Hudson, oh, in the back. He played for it, he swung into it, he played for it, it's still in the back. Look, it's it still in the back, Bob, now it's in the back. Uh, it is, look, Hudson, it's almost impossible to bump Hudson and give, give, not give a free kick away because he's so quick, he turns his back the last moment and gets these sort of things. 149 goals up, he is 20 yards out on a slight angle. 149 goals up, kicking to the scoreboard end. He kicks. 150. There's his third. Just on the 24 minute mark. There's a few policemen around the ground at the moment, Mike. Look, there's no shadow of doubt. We've got to congratulate him. He's equal Bob Pat's uh, record in one season. There is no doubt he played for that, but nevertheless, Bob, it was in the back. It's in the rules, and it's also quick thinking. I mean, I know when I played, I, I couldn't have been as quick to think of that. Right, Bob Skilton. Here's Leon Rice. Drives the ball down towards Hudson and uh, Lawrence again. It's blocked down by Lawrence, and Colin clears it and kicks it wide towards the boundary. Ma leads in the race of the ball. He takes it. A quick kick down towards Kenny. Kenny leading his opponent, Colin. It's the first time that he's been able to get a break. He can't get the ball clear, though. It breaks out towards Ma. Ross Smith whips in, though, and takes it. Kicks it down towards Big Carl. Carl plays on around the wing. Swings the ball in towards centre-half forward, where Johnny Bonnie's all on his own. Bonnie right in the centre of the ground. Comes down towards Green, and Green takes a fine chest mark. Barry Green, Bustle Green, pulled back off the mark. 25 and a half minutes of the second quarter gone. Two points of difference in favour of St Kilda. Green, Green's no further out than the last one he kicked. He drives it right in towards the goal square. It's offline and one point only. I think Bobby Green missed a little uh, short pass opportunity there of about 20 yards into, into Bonnie, which I think may have been a better uh, shot on that occasion. I think this is the penalty you pay sometimes when you do kick a long goal, you expect to do it. That makes St Kilda three points in front. Comment from Ron Barassi and Bob Skilton. It's Bustle now kicking out. Bustle is on Breen. Breen's gone to full forward. Davis out to uh, centre half forward. And of course, the respective opponents, uh, Bustle and Moore, have tailed them. So Moore is now at centre half back. Bustle at full back for Hawthorne. Scott, Scott of Hawthorne with the ball there on the half back flank on the outer side. Kicks past the wing position. Trapped by Trot. Oh, he's in a lot of trouble, however. Ma pushes the ball in front of him. Through comes Colling. Bounces off Martello. Ma is there again. Ma kicks the ball close to the boundary line. It's still going. In comes Matthews. It could be a collision. It's well over the line for mine. And the bound round player agrees. There'll be a throw in. A throw in on a half forward flank for Hawthorne. 
on the outer side. The Hawks kicking up to the scoreboard end. Hudson 150 goals up. Here's Dittrich running past. Up goes Martello with Minot. Down to the ground it comes. A scramble for the ball. Who's going to come out with it? Smith was there. Thought he had it, but Martello takes it from him. Bounce of the ball on the half forward flank for Hawthorne on the outer side. Ball knocked away by Minot. Taken by Angus. He can't get a clear kick in. It's a struggle there for it. Taken by Leon Rice. Down forward is Hudson and Lawrence. They're battling forward. Down it comes towards Matthews, however. Matthews in a bit of trouble. What's he going to do with it? Kicks it wide again. Oh, look at that. Hudson buffeted out of position. Picked up by Crimmins. Crimmins runs into trouble. He kicks three for one behind. Back to two points of difference. And I'm afraid this is what you're going to see all day. I would not be not be one bit surprised if we were back here next week. <laughs> I'm <laughs> telling you. <laughs> Kill the blind minor rides again. <laughs> now you can laugh, Paras. I'm not laughing, but it's a, it's a great courageous prediction, isn't it? Well, I tipped you'd win last year, didn't I? Well, that was pretty good sense, though. Yes. OK, Jeff Crowd. Lawrence kicking out, Faber in the outer side. The ball's on the ground. Angus is in the middle, 33. So too is Scott. Scott comes around on his left foot. Goes to the half forward flank. Up they go. Oh, beautiful really? mark. A lovely mark taken over there by Stevenson. On the half forward flank, Stevenson would be 65 yards out. 28 minutes gone in the second quarter. 65 yards out on a very acute angle. He's a right foot kick. Let's see what he can do. Here's the scoreboard. 4 3 Hawthorne, 4 5 St Kilda. Up he comes. It's a high drop punt kick, but it's offline. In fact, it's so far offline that it's out of bounds on the foot. As you can see there, 26, Hudson, equaling Bob Pratt's record at the present moment with 150 goals up. Lawrence, the two Taswegians competing against each other today, Barry Lawrence and Peter Hudson. Lawrence kicking out towards the outer side of the ground. Up they go, big Carl in front, the ball comes to Grant Elliott's in there, no one takes it, now they do. Goes forward from Neil, right into the centre of the ground, up Ooh. goes Bremner, no mark. It comes forward where Stephen Ray comes in, a left foot kick towards a Barry Green, he slips. He's trying to get away with Brussel. He does so now with a hand pass. Hand pass out towards Stephen Ray, who put it up towards goals with Ray. Punched away, though, by Park and through the goals. Good play by David Park, the Hawthorne skipper. One point to St Kilda. Gee, I certainly wouldn't uh, fancy playing against this Hawthorne defence, Ronnie. Now they're mean and hard, but no meaner than the Hawth uh, the St Kilda defence, right. Mike, because they've got the figures on the board as the meanest defence in league football in 1971. There's Bob Murray, looking rather dejected as Bussell kicks out for Hawthorne. Bussell comes along the member stand flank now, up they go. It's taken by Bremner. Bremner kicks it in towards centre-half back. This could leave the gate open if somebody's fast enough. Neil knocks it away here towards Smith. Smith could have got it around the neck, but he gets around. Smith has a hurried kick down towards the edge of the goal square. Breen goes up, no mark. Taken by Parkin of Hawthorne. Parkin now back along the member stand flank. Oh, Scott in the back. Woo! And Manzi Copkin. The ball now is on the wing position, on the member stand side. In comes Kelvin Moore. Kelvin Moore of Hawthorne up forward. Martello has to sit there and plucks it in. Beautifully judged. He's taken by Vasenko. He kicks. It's off line and one behind. Two points of difference again. 4-4 four, four, Hawthorne. 4-6 four, St Kilda. And we are... 30 minutes, 30 and a half minutes actually, into the second quarter. Siren about to go any tick of the clock. Lawrence about to kick off. No, no. There's Johnny Manzi who uh, copped one before as Barry Lawrence kicks off. Not a bad kick there towards the outer flank. The ball hits the ground, through comes Ma. With a, he's robbed of possession. Ma cleverly pushes the ball across to Crimmins. Crimmins in untold trouble, it's forced over the boundary line. There'll be a throw in. Hawthorne's half forward flank on the other side. There's the siren ending the second quarter with the scoreboard at half time reading in the 1971 grand final. Hawthorne 4 4 28, St Kilda 4 6 30. Umpire Peter Shields raises the ball aloft, signifying the start of the third quarter of the 1971 grand final. It's St Kilda going forward from the boot of Alan Davis. They're two points up. John Bonney puts it on its way. It's swinging around. It's close. It's through. 30 seconds. 30 seconds into the third quarter. Bobby Skilton, a great lift. A big knock from Didwich then, Mike. Right down the centre-half forward, Alan Davis. 
who kicked it down, who, where Bonnie from behind almost took the mark and then received the free kick. In the centre of the ground, Shields bounces the ball again. It's Minot and Scott. Minot gets the ball down to Didwich. She can't get it clear. Elliott does a short kick down where Rice of Hawthorne picks the ball up. He plays on and drives the ball further down towards centre half forward. It's back at the back of the pack. It's Matthews who hand passes over towards Peter Hudson. Hudson runs down. He can't get the ball. He's bustled by Judson and it's forced through for one point only. Peter Hudson leading in the race for the ball then, but couldn't quite get clear. With their 19th and 20th men on now, Wilson came on after half time, replacing, I believe, Robert Day. So Hawthorne have their 19th and 20th men on. Beck replaced uh, Hawken in the first quarter, and Wilson replacing Day at half time. There's the kick out now, going towards the outer flank. Up they go, the ball knocked away, taken by Basanko, can't get his boot to it. In they come, picked up by Manzi. Manzi very quickly across to Pays. Pays now kicks down forward. There's a Hawthorne fellow down towards the wing position on the outer side. It's taken there by Davis. Up to the half forward flank. In they come, St Kilda streaming forward now. A battle of Royal Breen and Bustle. In they come, woo, and over they go. And the result. It's Heath. Heath, did you see what happened? Frank Adams. pocket a free kick and it's gone a big Carl Dittrich Dittrich a long way up in the forward pocket 45 to 50 yards a drop punt kick going right into the square it'll be close it's fallen short however picked up here by Parkin onto the left foot now driven up towards the half back flank the race is on Kenny the ball over his head into the open territory taken here by Judson driven up towards St. Kilda's forward pocket coming out the middle is Bonnie Dummies gets a hand pass back went over towards Clement Stevenson pushed in the back by Dittrich and Stevenson did hit the free kick Dittrich having a couple of words to say about that but the camera's right on it and you can see a dead set free kick Play on the member's side of the ground. Stevenson up the woods and killed his half forward flank and coming in to mark the ball of Alan Davis. Great to have Frank Adams up here with us, the former Melbourne star, because he and Ron Barassi share the record. Eight grand finals and six premierships when they were starring with Melbourne. There's Davis now, kicking in towards the centre half forward posse. It's Moore in front. He'll be paid at Kelvin Moore in front. Bluey conditions out there. They seem to have settled down. The rain has stopped. That doesn't seem to be as greasy as uh, in the first quarter and midway through the second. No, a lot better, Michael, and better football now as Matthews breaks clear from centre half forward, puts it up towards Hudson. It's Lawrence in front, couldn't pick it up. Hudson now uh, gets pushed out on the side, in comes Angus, gets a handball along. Moran can't pick it up, taken by Cowboy Neil. Neil steadies from the back pocket, hooks the ball back towards centre half back. Up they go, and Wilson, uh, the only one to have his eyes on the ball, takes the mark at centre half forward. Ray Wilson. Torpedo punt kick working its way up towards Hudson. Down he goes. Neil going back and not, but Beck got one hand to it, spoiled, and uh, over the line it went for a throw in right next to Hawthorne's behind post. Conditions, as Michael have, has told you, have improved. St Kilda leading at the moment. Beck doing battle in the forward pocket, trying to get it down. Minot gets a foot to it. It's been picked up here by Judson, who's picked up by Matthews. Uh, the result of all that, Judson's free kick. Ron Barassi. Hawthorne, their 19th and 20th men on at the start of the second half. A worry for any coach. Well, they're not in a good position at the moment, Mike, because of this, and also with the uh, rain dropping away, it means that play becomes a bit more skillful. Here we see Dittrich, got a break on the pack on the centre wing, and put up the full foot. It's not a good kick, but funny. It's marked clearly. Oh, the Dittrich strips it, knocks it away. It's St Kilda going forward, but Moore again relieving the pressure. And look at the way they're crashing into each other. That's the only word to describe it. They're crashing into each other. And the kick will be given further downfield. It's going to Rice. Rice is on the halfback flank on the other side. He slips over as he comes in the kick. Still must be slippery in certain spots. Elliot of St Kilda with the ball up towards the pocket. Davis is there. Play position beautifully. And Alan Davis, who's been moved out to centre half forward, hasn't kicked a goal as yet. Davis coming up. He's only 45 yards out. He kicks the result. One behind. Hawthorne are now 4-5 to St Kilda, 5-7. 4-5 to 5-7. Eight points the difference in favour of St Kilda. Doesn't look as though it's going to be a high-scoring match, Bob Skilton. Not at all, Mike. 
Here's Bustle kicking up towards centre half back. In front of the pack was Ken Beck, but he couldn't grab it. It's punched down by Davis. Bonnie comes in. He's hit very heavily. It's a free kick to Bonnie. Bonnie's directly in front and only 20 yards out. Hawthorne there, thanks, not Roy too Simmons, happy. not very happy at all. Well, Simmons, chairman of selectors for Hawthorne. Here's John Bonney receiving a word of encouragement from Brian Minot. Directly in front, 20 yards out. Bonnie coming in. It's, it's straight through the middle. Bonnie's kicked two goals. And that takes the scoreboard to St Kilda, six goals, seven. Leading Hawthorne, four goals, five. Six and a half minutes into the third quarter. Ron Barassi, Hawthorne are looking as if they're struggling at the moment. They are definitely, Mike. But this appeared a slightly the pattern just before half time. I think St Kilda have gone on with the game. This, the fact the rain has stopped has helped them open up the game and made them more confident, I feel. Frank blew out and Minor taps it down. Been taken here by and nearly lost by Heath. Still with it now. A high kick now up towards the centre half forward. Going back and waiting for it. Judson. Judson now from centre half. Ball going back. Free kick's been called. Alan Davis with it now. Throwing it back and it'll be... Uh, the free kick to be taken by Kevin Heath. Heath at centre half back for Hawthorne. Comes in. Floating, wobbling punt kick out towards the half forward. Frank Martello used his strength, upset the pack, recovers well, gets a hand pass, pass across, nearly a throw. Taken and lost by Wilson. Back to Martello, who has held. He gets a quick kick in now. More towards his centre wing position. They fly. Angus was there, couldn't to pick it up. Kicked off the ground by Moran into the open space and was picked up by Stephen Ray. Ray, a hand pass back, looks for, finds Moran. In comes Angus. He's easily beaten as Moran drives across towards centre half forward. Neil's there. The ball picked up here by Stevenson and Stevenson. A high kick back up towards the half forward flank. They wait for it. Marco in front. Vasenko from Ooh. behind. Oh, in they come. Matthews throwing himself into it. Uh, Ross Smith hold and Ross Smith lets to take the free kick. Ross Smith, the St Kilda skipper. Right on the centre wing. Although a 15 too. yard penalty has been imposed here. It takes him right up to the half forward flank. St Kilda starting to look good as Ross Smith puts them into attack up towards the forward pocket. Green from behind, taken here by Bremner. Well collared, down he went. The player's going at hard, a chance here for Ray, but the umpire's whistle's gone, and it's Hawthorne's free kick, Norm Bustle to take it. Bustle in the back pocket. Hawthorne trailing now as Bustle comes in, a high kick. Not a good one, up towards the half-back flank. They set themselves, they wait for it, comes down to the ground, taken by Manzi, put across towards Smith, couldn't pick it up. Uh, chance there for Matthews, if he can get out of it. Rice is in his way, he's well tackled by Davis too. Uh, down he goes, the result of that, the tackle not quite correct, and the free kick to Matthews. Lee Matthews, strong Hawthorne Rover, torpedo punt kick up towards the centre wing. Might on in front, punched away by Scott, kicked forward by Angus, up towards centre half forward. forward position, a lot of jostling going on, taken by Lawrence, kicked off the ground by Lawrence into the open territory, and away goes Trot, Trot looking for the bounce, picks it up, tries it up towards the centre wing, there's no one there for Hawthorne, a chance for cleared uh, off for St Kilda, gets out of trouble, a hand passes to Dittrich, Dittrich runs up towards the half forward flank, the kicks towards the pocket, they're running in, Breen takes it, pushed over the line by Bussell, the decision, a throw in forward pocket, St Kilda attacking, 30 yards out from their goal. This is the Kilda Prince. Getting excited as everyone is here. Beck with the tap down. Picked up and lost by Park. And chance here for Bonnie. He's tackled here by Porter. And Porter once again, let's see, is he giving away another free? No, this time a bounce. Just about forward pocket for the Saints. 40 yards from St Kilda's goal. Dittrich takes it. Gets a high kick in the direction of the goal square. And the mark, a good solid mark in defence by Norm Bussell. Comment from Frank Adams. Here's Bob Skilton. Bussell goes wide to the outer side of the ground. It's Manzi with nobody near him. Manzi steady. Swings it in towards goal. It's going. Shepard it there, but Parker comes over the top and cuts it through for one point. Oh, course. great effort. Great effort. Ron Barassi, that's the type of effort you like to see from any player. Yes, well, uh, Park and the best man on the ground in this, this is the last match that these two teams met in. Certainly putting his full effort in there. Judged it perfectly. I was a bit surprised he didn't try to mark because the punch means you're only trying to hit that ball with one little, you know, five or six inches worth of the hands. But it may have been safer. But still, the result was good for a point to St Kilda instead of a certain goal. Thank you, Bob Skilton. Great mark there by Kevin Heath. Heath handballs on to Calvin Moore. And Moore wide towards Crimmins on the half-forward flank. But Barry Lawrence, who has left Hudson, comes out wide and clears 
knocked it out towards Judson. Judson brings it further around, but it's over the line and out of bounds on the members' side of the ground, half forward flank for the Hawthorne side. Up they go. It's Minot and Beck. Nobody can get it clear, but Ray Wilson now in the centre for Hawthorne. Swings it over towards Martello. Martello almost marks. Recovers. He's can kill the players or everywhere, but nobody can get the ball clear. It's Pasenko who gets it, knocks it over the line and out of bounds. Wilson has gone into the centre. Angus to a half forward flank. There's the throw in. It's Scott and Minot. Scott gets it over, knocks it over towards Keddy. Keddy swings it around with a short kick on towards Ross Smith. Smith comes in in front of Hudson and slips over the line and carries the ball with him. There's Laura there in your screen, and it's a free kick to Lawrence to secure the full back. Lawrence brings the ball around towards the half-back flank. Dinerich, up from the line, almost held the mark. Comes down at Crimson's Crimson kicks the ball out of Smith's hands, but Clayon says the umpire. Ma drops the ball, and Ross Smith, courageous as he is, comes in. Beck drops the mark. In comes Theodore and takes the ball over the line. All players going in fiercely at the moment. A wonderful example of 36 players' courage. The ball's knocked wide by down towards Heath. Heath now in the van. Swings the ball back in towards centre-half forward, and Alan Martello. Martello can't quite reach it. Leon Rice comes in. Martello in the van now. Kicks. It's going towards Lawrence. Lawrence oh. takes the ball cleanly. Comes wide. Drives it to the half-back flank. And up they fly. It's Beck who almost takes them out. But Dick Richards. Oh! Yeah, oh! There. And, they come, and it's a free kick. To I'll Alan. tell you what, if Dick Rich has a whack at somebody in a minute, he's quite entitled to. Oh. Glenn Elliott, the secure the centre man. Elliott takes the ball across the ground. Yeah, Angus almost there, but he can't quite take it. Stephen Ray leading in the race for the ball. He seems a little push, recovers quicker and has more pace than anybody else. Comes around and drives it down towards centre half forward. Up they fly. Green takes the mark. That's called play on by the umpire. He recovers quicker than any Hawthorne player and comes around and drives it towards goal. Is it? Is it? players and there's the scoreboard Hawthorne 4-5 trailing St Kilda 7 goals 8 just on 14 minutes into the third quarter of the 1971 grand final on they come it's Judson who comes out from the back pocket for St Kilda it's over the top of Bremner and Stephen Ray comes in to bounce the ball once steadies hand passes over to Davis Davis falls at the crucial moment he's there it's taken too long it's play on call the umpire Kelvin Moore takes too long to kick it as Davis recovered quickly. Oh, in comes ball. Ray. Stephen Theodore overruns the ball. Out comes David Parker, a great player in defence for Hawthorne, and drives the ball wide to the wing. There's Stuart Trott leading in the race. Behind him comes Lee Matthews, pushing him in the back, and Trott will get the result of free kick. Stuart Trott, a fine player today for St Kilda, on the wing, on the members' side of the ground. Well, if you don't find this exciting, there's something wrong with you. You're watching it through Channel 7 in Melbourne. The big fella, Ditwich, goes up. Scott's with him down to Davis. It comes. He's well tackled. Over to Smith, however. Smith from the pocket. Kicks. Don't tell me. He's put it through. He's put it through. Just over the 15-minute mark in the third quarter of the 71 grand final. And St Kilda taking a grip on it, 4-5. Uh, Hawthorne, St Kilda, 8-8. Eight, eight. Ron Barassi, your comment. Well, I can't see uh, St Kilda being anything else but happy with this break they've got at the moment. And Hawthorne, I think they're struggling, Mike. They can't seem to have a player to lift their side at all. But, Ron, it would be very dangerous for uh, of course St Kilda it would. to become complacent. But we're just talking about the, the state of the game at, the, at this moment. I feel that Hawthorne have panicked a bit in the past 10 minutes. They've given away some silly free kicks. They've gone head-hunting, and they're paying the penalty. Kick now, down towards centre-half, forward, up they go, no mark, Hudson very quickly across to Keddy, Keddy down forward, but it's well off line, it'll go out of bounds in the forward pocket on the member stand side. Hawthorne are kicking down to the Richmond end of the MCG. 
Hawthorne, unfortunately for them, in awful trouble with their 19th and 20th men on. Throw in, Beck goes up there, mine not in front, down it comes here, taken by Lawrence, who's playing a tremendous game on that back line. Lawrence to the half-back flank on the member stand side. Ball pushed along by Ma. He gets a hurried kick in, but it's snapped by Pasanko of St Kilda. Pasanko with the weak position. Here's the big fella again. Dick Rich, but he overruns it. He's tackled by Heath. Here's the battle, look at this. Oh, Tiggy Touchwood, and the free kick's given to Heath. Heath now to the half-forward flank on the member stand side, marked by Ma. Ma to Porter, back to Ma. Kick smothered by Trotter, courageous effort. Pays with the ball, he's carried along by Ma. It's taken by Trot. Trot back to the wing position on the member stand side. It trundles over the line, and there'll be a throw-in. Wasn't that a fantastic effort by Trot, Mike? Oh, courageous. Gee, I tell you what. There are 36 real gutsy players out there. Minot and Scott go up for it. To the ground it comes. Wilson punches it forward. And speaking of guts, look at this fellow. Ross Smith back to the wing position. And a mark taken by Porter of Hawthorne. Porter now drives into what's in a half forward. Martello goes up in front. Has it knocked away by Pasenko. A hand pass across here to Angus. His kick it up is a hurried one. Neil has a chance here. He's in front of uh, Big Beck. Big Beck butters up, however. He's hanging on to Neil. Neil breaks clear. Gets a hurry kick into the centre. There's nobody home. They race for it here. Heath overruns the ball. Davis comes in there. Whoa! Davis almost went. And look at that. Oh, did the show over. They're certainly aiming for Big Carl. He's big enough to look after himself anyhow. It comes here to trot. Trot struggles it forward. Dittrich has the ball. A long hand pass by Dittrich. Goes across to Bonnie. Bonnie manoeuvring around. A long hand pass. A high one, two towards Davis. He's tackled by Parkin. The ball pushed towards Bustle. Bustle of Hawthorne. He's on the ground with the ball. And the result, there'll be a baller. Oh, boy, in the forward pocket for St Kilda on the member stand side. They're kicking up to the scoreboard end. Bounce of the ball, up they go, knocked away by Scott towards uh, David Park, and he's close to the boundary line, but beautifully kept in play by the Hawthorne skipper. But this time it does bounce over the line on the wing position on the member stand side. Ron Barassi, would you agree, or would you comment on uh, the statement I made that uh, Hawthorne were hunting or looking too much for Dittrich? Well, he's a man that inspires the opposition, uh it inspires his teammates, Mike, and he certainly want to try and keep down, but not by the methods that they're using it, I think. They're overconscious of it, and that's the point I was making. Well, you could say the same about St Kilda with Hudson, couldn't you? Yes, right, here's Keddie coming in. Oh, Keddie, it's a beautiful kick! Cowboy Neil appealing for the mark. We paid it. Well, the appeal cried with the mark or the free kick, and I think he was paid the free kick, Bob. Yes, Mike. Neil now drives the ball to the half-back flank. Nobody can hold the mark, but Masenko is the first to recover. He drives it round towards the half-forward flank. Gremner of Hawthorne coming out, knocks the ball over the line and out of bounds. Right on the centre center wing, outer side of the ground. St Kilda looking in a good position at this stage. Here they come. It's Ditterich and Heath. Ditterich gets a knock over towards Smith. Smith handballs it out towards Glenn Elliott. Elliott knocked handballs back to Basenko and Basenko drives it down to centre half forward. It's Davis who breaks away there, but Bustle comes out from centre half back, from full back. Two more, and Moore drives the ball around the wing. Over from the back comes Moran, a great mark in defence. Moore's and Gilda, Jack Moran, the half back flanker. Short passes further around where Stephen Ray is all on his own. Hawthorne a little bit rattled at this stage with loose players here, there, and everywhere. Stephen Ray runs around Angus on the mark. Left foots it further down the ground, and a great mark is taken by David Parkin. Oh, it's a Would have been a free kick anyway. Parkin has been great in defence. Parkin going up the centre of the ground. It's Kenny and Colling, but Colling, fine in defence, takes a great mark. Colling swings it down towards the half forward flank. It goes over the top. Out comes Bustle from full back and drives the ball down towards the wing position. Kenny in the release of the race for the ball. There's Mark comes in. Will be shepherded by Crimmins. And it goes down towards Lawrence, all on his own. Breaking clear of Hudson. And Lawrence, a great player, since shifted onto Hudson, makes a fine chest mark. Hudson not too happy about the way the ball was delivered down. He made a lead to the 
Members stay inside, and the ball went straight to Lawrence. Lawrence now kicking in towards the centre. Ditrich is there, but the ball knocked away. Here's a chance for Stevenson. Handballs forward. Oh, Smith comes through there. Runs into a bit of trouble. Eventually gets his kick to the wing position on the member stand side. Then they come. It's uh, Stephen Theodore of St Kilda. Theodore in towards centre half forward. Beats everybody. It's taken by Manzi. Manzi of St Kilda. Over go Green and Bustle. And there'll be a throw-in. Breen looking for the free kick. Bumbaresi, if you were John Kennedy, are there any moves you could make? Uh, probably quite a few. Uh, Mike, but I can't just think of them now. Let's have a th <laughs> You've caught me on the hop there. OK, have a think about them as Manzi picks up, runs close to the boundary line, but it's over. Uh, there are no obvious ones then. Well, I think uh, Marcello should, could be, should be put in ruck. He's not doing much of centre-half forward. That's one move that could take place. Throw in now in the forward pocket for St Kilda on the outer side. The ball comes down here to Bremner. Bremner to the wing position, still on that outer side. Up they go. The mark to nobody. In comes Angus, pushes the ball on. Rice is there. Angus will ship it for him, but oh, Neil bowls him over in no uncertain manner. The Sanko, a hand pass to Dittrich. Dittrich now, who's come right into the game in this third quarter, gets it up towards the half forward. Oh, St Kilda going in hard as Stuart Trott kicks up the big ones. He's hit the post. Hit the post. Oh, Billy Adams. All the thrill of a grand final. Takes you back a few years, huh? Certainly does, Michael. I can't remember any that would have been more hard-hitting than this one. Play going on as the ball's driven up right down the centre of the ground. Dittrich spoils. Comes down the chance here for Trot. Being held and he'll take the free kick. Stuart Trot. One of St Kilda's best players in the second semi-final and certainly playing well today. Oh. In a hurry to get on, Mulls, it comes down to the ground. Kick along by Wilson, but not far. Trot gets the boot to it. Can't get it clear. Back towards Wilson, a desperate tackle. Makes him unload the ball quickly. Taken by Trot. Oh, what a shot. And down went Trot. Oh, up there he is. And the players are coming in here. Alan Jean's not too happy about the treatment. Neither is Stuart Trot either. Have a look at him. Right in the face. The umpire spoke to Lee Matthews too. And indicated what it was for. Well, Stuart Trot certainly will be a little bit shaky after that one. Play certainly slowing up, and one can't help but think, Ron Barassi, at this stage uh, in the second semi final, it was St Kilda who were trailing by 27 or 28 points, as the case is now. Play goes on. St Kilda looking good as the ball shot out the Woods Davis, but it's offline and a throw into result about 40 yards out from the St Kilda goal. The Hawks on 4-5-29, St Kilda on 8-9-57. They do battle in the rucks, up goes Beck, gets a tap there, look for Crimmins, but uh, Wilson sharked it, puts the punt kick up towards the centre wing, Minot with the height advantage, can't bring it down, down on the ground it comes, Matthews diving on top of it, Dittrich hanging onto him and giving away the free kick. Matthews and Hawthorne fashion now, plays on quickly, a punt kick up towards the half forward plate, Neil's there, uses his weight, Hudson taps it further forward, a nice knock right up towards the forward pocket, a chance for Rice, if he can handle the ball, in comes Moran, the oh, it's, the it. it's a ripper! Oh, an impossible tackle, but it's been put through by Leon Rice, for what uh, I'd say is uh, certainly a badly needed goal by the Hawthorne side. 23 and a half minutes into the third quarter of the 71 grand final, that's Hawthorne's first goal, for this quarter. Rice Michael has been moved to the half forward flank and Angus going to the wing. You've got to give credit uh, Ron Barassi to Peter Hudson. Good well, thinking. Well it was only good thinking Mike, it was uh, extraordinarily quick thinking too. Bounce the ball in the centre, Smith comes through there, grabs the ball but he's tackled by Angus, tries a long hand pass but it's intercepted by Bremner. Bremner of Hawthorne now to the wing position proper on that outer side, racing for it as Heath. He keeps the ball. No, he doesn't keep it in play. There'll be a throw in. Well, you're, ask, you're asking Sorry. before about positional moves. Pretty hard for John to make too many because he hasn't got enough good players in form to move around into a position where they can perhaps get the ball more. Hawthorne not playing as well as they did in the second semi, in other words, Ron. Oh, I, I think they're playing about the same as they did in the last quarter of that second semi. Kick now down towards Hudson, up he goes, couldn't hold the mark. The pressure relieved by Travis Pays, kicks into the centre of the MCG. Players come out to meet it. Here's a go for Alan Davis. He's tackled low by Ma. He loses possession. Ball picked up by Theodore. Theodore now goes right across the ground. Up goes Ray Wilson of Hawthorne and he marks. He was about to go but had second thoughts. Wilson now kicks down forward. No mark to the ground it comes, but I think a free kick will come out of this. Free kick going to Big Beck of Hawthorne. Came on in the first quarter to replace Hawthorne. Beck. 
Drives down forward, Lawrence is in front of Hudson. Oh, Hudson almost held it. Taken by Colling. Colling out to the flank position on that outer side. The ball kicked forward and one behind from the boot of Jeff Angus, Angus. was over there. Incidentally, Michael, Stuart Trott's been moved to a forward pocket until he recovers, and uh, John Bonney's gone to Woodsy centre wing. Scoreboard 5 6 Hawthorne, 8 9 St Kilda. Frank Adams. Well, that's the story. St Kilda leading by 21 points. Barry Lawrence kicking into Woodsy out of half back flank. Uh, might not out of position. The ball comes to the ground and Dittrich sockers off out towards the open territory on the centre wing. There's no one there. And over the line it goes for a throw in in that position. Ron Barassi. I think, Mike, that uh, one of the features in the second half is Dittrich's improved form. Just the same as in the second semi. He's really added life to round the packs. Bluey comes down. Could have been a free there, but it's play on as the ball's driven up towards Hawthorne's forward pocket. Then uh, Kenny doing his uh, fair amount of pushing and shoving. Went unnoticed. Uh, Matthews went with a kick off the ground. Couldn't make contact. A bit of a stalemate. 35 yards out in front of the Hawthorne goal. And umpire Peter Shields to bounce. Forward line congested, as you can imagine. Minot doing a power ruck work. Gets a tap down. Angus ducks ahead. Look for the free. Wasn't there. It's been taken by Ray Wilson from centre half forward. He puts it up towards the forward pocket. Up goes Collins. Spoils. And through it goes for one point. So that takes the Hawthorne side one point closer, but still trailing uh, as time runs out. And this is the third quarter here in the 1971 Grand Final. Ron Barassi have got to give full credit to uh, the St Kilda back line. They're playing magnificently. I don't know their back line, Mike. It's right, right over the field. Their rucks, their rovers, their forward line. The whole team is lifted themselves tremendously and taken advantage of these better conditions prevailing in the second half. Bob Skilton. There's the ball in the centre of the ground. It's Heath leading Cowboy Neil for it. Heath gets it and punches it on a little bit further. Neil, a great uh, competitor at this stage. Heath can't get the ball clear. Wilson kicks it off the ground and it comes out where it's Des Mar leading in the race for the ball, but it's going to beat them both over the line and out of bounds. Right on the wing position. Here's the throw-in. It's Minot to Scott. Minot gets a knock over the top of Scott, but gives away a free kick in doing so. I'm sure our friends through uh, CBC 7 Canberra, TVW 7 in Perth, will be over there in a couple of weeks, and we're really looking forward to it. TNT 9 Launceston, ADS 7 in Adelaide. We'll be there next weekend. I bet they're all enjoying this through the cameras of Channel 7 in Melbourne, the 1971 Grand Final of the Victorian Football League. What a commentary team we've got. Louis Adams, Jack Edwards, Jeff Crouch, Bobby Skilton, Ron Barassi. Ball tapped down the Crimmins, but a free kick going St Kilda's way, Bob Skilton. Brian Minot, a minute ago, gave away a free kick. This time, the receiver of the free kick, when Ken Beck, from behind, uh, mauled Minot. Minot, a power of strength in the ruck for St Kilda. Minot, a long kick, further around the ground, punched away by Kevin Heath. Ross Smith battling for the ball. In comes Peter Crimmins. Nobody can get it clear. Rice of Hawthorne comes in. He's over the top of the ball. Nobody can get it out. And Peter Shields said, I will ball it up. Ron Barassi, would you bring Hudson uh, out to centre half forward? Uh, no, I wouldn't, Mike. Not, not that it's not a good idea, but I just he hasn't succeeded in the past but when, when moved down, so I can't say it's worth trying because of that. Stephen Ray with the ball for St Kilda going forward. Here's a go now for Breen, but Bustle's hot in his ginger. Knocked away there by Bustle. Gee, he's a tight player. Breen has the ball. He's in a bit of trouble there. Bustle after him like a terrier after a rat. But Breen gets his kick forward. That's marked by Ray. Ray who came on to replace Bob Murray. They're quite loose on Stephen Ray at the moment, Mike. Ray takes his kick. Not a bad one. Players move into position. There's a good mark to Ian Bremner of Hawthorne. And the siren goes, ending the third quarter of the 1971 Grand Final with the scoreboard reading, Hawthorne 5-7-37, St Kilda 8-9-57. Michael Williamson at the MCG, bidding a welcome to the final quarter of the 1971 Grand Final, Hawthorne and St Kilda. We go into the final quarter, St Kilda have a 20-point advantage over Hawthorne. The ball in the centre. Hawthorne with their 19th and 20th men on. Here's Stevenson going through now. Stevenson kicks up to the forward pocket on the member stand side. Will the mark be paid to Cowboy Neal? Yes. And there'll be a 15-yard penalty as well. A 15-yard penalty. What a commentary team we've got for Jeff Crouch. We've had Frank Adams. We've had uh, Jack Edwards. We've also got Bobby Skilton, triple Brownlow medalist. And the big man in football, Ron Barassi. 
Ron Barassi, any changes you can see? Well, I can see a positional move, uh, although it's a bit hard to tell because of the way Kendi puts his forward line, but Bob Kendi, Bob Kenny, open up in the goal square and Peter Hudson out in the centre-half forward position. Which Rice, might, may not mean a thing, of course. Rice now kicks forward for the Hawks. A struggle going on, Lee Matthews, to get the free kick. 20 points the difference. Matthews, always a long way out. 65 yards. There's Hudson in the goal square. Neil behind him. Lawrence in front of him. It's a big kick. Don't tell me he's put it through. Oh, beautiful. A fantastic kick for us. Well, you've nominated Mike at 65 yards, and I think it was every foot of that. And that was a, a goal that Hawthorne need. To me, I don't know. I don't, I, what do you think? I'd like to know what the others think, but they seem to open up a bit fresher. They look that way, Ron. I think they've opened up with a great deal of determination. Here's the bounce in the centre of the ground. Scott gets it, almost gets it down. It comes to Elliot. Elliot kicks down towards Parkin and Bonnie. Nobody can take the mark. It's play on. Down it comes to Theodore. Handball's over to Davis. He drops the ball. Bustle comes clear for Hawthorne and drives the ball straight up the centre of the ground. The pack flies. It comes down to Matthews. He can't get it clear. Pasenko comes out and it goes to Desmar. Ma drives the ball out towards the half-forward flank where it's Lawrence and Hudson. Lawrence clicks it back to... Trot, and Trot kicks it back to his man, Des Ma. Ma plays on quickly down to the forward pocket. Nobody can take the mark. It's Hawthorne in the van as through comes Kenny. Kenny, yes, he does pick it up. Doesn't give himself time to steady. Kicks it spin and it's Moran. Moran hand passes out to Travis Page, all on his own. Steadies and drives the ball down around the wing. It's Bremner who takes the fine mark over the top of Manzi. Bremner swings the ball wide. It's Rice and Ray. Rice in front, takes oh, a good mark. He plays on, but Peter Shields says, come no. back, I paid the mark earlier. No mark. Just over two and a half minutes into the final quarter. Jeff Crouch, was it a mark? Of course it was a mark, and Rice goes towards centre half. Forward up goes Martello, no mark that one. It comes to the ground, Vaseko comes to the left foot kick. Over Dickens' his head, but to Moore. Moore of Hawthorne racing through the centre. A left foot kick to centre half, forward up, touch. And over it goes towards Lawrence. Magnificent game Lawrence has played. Towards Theodore over in the wing position. Theodore balks Porter. Well done, Theodore. Comes around the wing on the outer side. In towards the half forward and a good mark. A short mark taken in there by Kelvin Moore. The Hawthorne full back in the centre half back position. Drives out to the outer side of the, the ground. Up goes Ma from behind. Can't take it. Now he butters up. There. Trots on his ginger. He can't get it. Ma's looking for a free kick. And gets it. And gets it. Plays on. Play on's a call now. It's a short kick going towards Lee Matthews. Oh, over the back goes Moran. Lee Matthews has got a clip of a free kick and gets this one too. The St Kilda player down there. It's uh, Stewie Trot. Trot who got unloaded in the third quarter. As Matthews takes his kick down forward, they set themselves. Hudson is in that lot. There's a chance for Stevenson. He runs into a heap of trouble, as you saw. Taken by Lawrence. Can't get his kick. Picked up by Martello. He's being manhandled. Taken by Kitty. points of difference from Barassi. What a beautiful comeback early in the last quarter by Hawthorne. Well, it was, Mike, and it, it looks as though we are, uh, St Kilda are a little bit tired. I've noticed a few of their kicks have gone astray, Mike, and this is a sign of a tired side, and, and in direct contrast to their kicking in the latter half of the third quarter, or the whole of the third quarter. So this is not a good sign for Alan Jeans at the moment. It'd be interesting to see what he what he would do. He's worried. There's Alan Jeans. He's, he's made one space. move, Mike. He's putting Davis back to full forward and bring us in a half forward. I think it's good thinking. The ball has bounced. Martello of Hawthorne drives him forward. Hudson comes in there. The ball escapes him, however. Who comes little Crimmins. Crimmins has it. He's running into an open goal. He kicks. He's put it through. It's his second. Just on five minutes. Hawthorne have kicked three goals in three minutes. Hawthorne, three goals in three minutes in the final quarter. Well, Bobby Skilden, what do you reckon? Well, I noticed that Matthews is playing on a half-forward flank, Mike. They are roving Jeff Angus and Peter Crimmins. Crimmins. Hawthorne have come from the depths of despair. Bobby, continue on with what you were saying. It's only five minutes into this game, Mike, and if, some, if Hawthorne can get another break at this stage, I would say it would worry St Kilda. But it still gives St Kilda plenty of time to steady. 
Looks as if they're bringing in new balls from Dylan McLeod has uh, taken the one that was kicked over. There's umpire Peter Shields with the new ball. Many players around this centre bounce and much will depend on this particular bounce. Dittrich is in there for St Kilda. Heath. Hayes. They're all gathered around. Wait for the bounce. There it goes, and up they go. Minot was there. The ball knocked forward, taken by Moran. Couldn't get a kick in through, comes Smith. The ball there, goes Hawthorne's way. Hudson, oh, Lawrence went high up on his back. Play on is the call, Hudson's down. The ball picked up by Matthews of Hawthorne. Hawthorne going forward, here's a go in the pocket. Getty couldn't hold the mark. Picked up by right. Wilson, he's played a free kick. Jeff Crouch, any doubt about it? In the back, it wasn't a mark, he played it in the back. Any doubt about no it? No doubt about it, right. about that one. Kitty is 30 yards out. He's on an angle, kicking from the outer side to the scoreboard end goal. An important kick, this one. It comes up. Put it through for one behind. One behind. The crowd went mad. They thought it was a goal. But one behind, making the difference. One point. One point at the seven-minute mark in the 1971 grand final last quarter. Oh, what a hard stop by Bob Skilton. No doubt in the world about that, Mike. Barry Lawrence kicking out. I don't know whether Hudson has been shifted back, but Lawrence is kicking out for St Kilda. Up they go. And Minot takes a good mark in front of the pack. It's not often we see Brian Minot take this type of mark, but under the pressure of, at this stage of the game, that was a great mark for, the, for his side. Brian Minot, half-back flank. Drives the ball further around the wing position. And it looks a good mark from behind. Porter. It's Mike Porter, the Hawthorne halfback flanker. Started the game on a half forward flank when Robert Day went off into the halfback. Now comes Day in towards centre half forward. You'll see them fly there. And Hudson pulls down a great mark. There's Hudson. Hudson plays on and drives the ball down towards the goal square. There's Kenny behind Colling. It's a good mark too. Kenny's off the. But it's one point only. One point and scores are level. Scores are level in the last quarter of the 71 grand final. We're at the eight minute mark. Ron Barassi, you wouldn't expect to see anything more exciting. Well, you would not, Mike. The scores are level, but the, the atmosphere of the game isn't. I think uh, Hawthorne are well in charge at this stage. As Colin kicks out, comes along the member stand flank. Rice races for the ball, overruns it. Taken by Cowboy Neal, up to the wing position on the member stand side. Trapped by Manzi. Manzi of St Kilda in towards Green. Green fumbled the mark, but he's well clear of Bustle. Green now down forward. There's a tussle between Moore and Davis. And Calvin Moore takes a very strong, steady, courageous mark. Moore of Hawthorne now. Kicks into the centre of the MCG. Dittrich is there. Hudson was there. Nobody able to take the mark. Down it comes. Through comes Bustle. Gets a hurried kick. Back in the centre. Minot underneath all that. Could easily get a free kick and will get one. Brian Minot slapped bang in the centre of the MCG. The crowd going mad here. Minot takes his kick. Goes off the side of his boot. Out of the flank position. Taken by Dittrich. Crashes his way through. Picked up by David Parkin. Parkin of Hawthorne to the wing position on the outer side. And the mark taken by Ma. Ma plays on immediately. Ma to the half forward flank on that outer side. Judson and Crimmins going for it. Judson picks it up but trundles it over the boundary line. Midway between the wing position and half forward flank for Hawthorne on that outer side. Hawthorne kicking up to the scoreboard end. Scott goes in there with Minot. In comes Wilson. Gets a hurried kick. It's Hawthorne going forward now. The ball comes back. Oh, it's going in all directions. Taken by Martello. Martello a long kick down forward. A battle wall going on. John Kennedy. Kennedy. He's kicked one in this final quarter, one for the match. He's 12 yards out, directly in front. He kicks. Fourth corner in front. Fourth corner in front. At the 10 minute mark in the final quarter. Comment from Ron Barassi. Well, Mike, it looks as though this move of Kennedy's to put. Uh, Bob Kitty up in the goal square, in the goal front. It's a winning move so far. His life, he's featured in two goals already, and it looks a winning move. That's if they win. Regardless of whether they win or lose from now, it is a good move because it's working. It's brought them back from the brink of disaster, Barras. Well, I don't know about this. I think it's the, the whole spirit of the side is definitely lifted from three-quarter time. I think we tipped it at that, at that stage. They seem to have increased life, Mike. 
Martello got that knocked down. It went to Jeff Angus, but Angus has been uh, freed for holding the ball. Lawrence brings it around towards Pays. Pays almost took a courageous mark. It's kicked off the ground by Beck. It goes into the open spaces. All players running for it. Cowboy Neal comes out, kicks it off the ground. Goes towards Stephen Ray. Ray's bumbling the ball. And in comes Peter Crimmins. Crimmins on the wing position. Steadies and drives it down towards half forward. A free kick downfield will go to Don Scott. Umpire Peter Shields said that Crimmins was knocked down after he kicked the ball. Hawthorne rejuvenated, full of confidence. Jeff Crouch. Hawthorne are certainly doing that. They're coming home like a train. This is the Hawthorne side we saw early in the year. What a magnificent fit team they seem to be at the present moment. All credit due to John Kennedy, but the game's not far from over at the present moment. There's Hudson in your screen with Barry Lawrence. Barry Lawrence has held Hudson scoreless in the second half since he's gone on him. The free kick coming back to Don Scott up the field. Don Scott at the half forward plate position on the member stand side of the ground. There's his kick going towards goals. The players hit themselves. Up goes Big Martell. Hudson's there. Lawrence 2, number 13. Over they go. Matthews gets pushed over. Is it a free? Looks like Peter Shields will say, give it to me, fellas. It's a ball up. A ball up 25 yards out from Hawthorne's goal. Scoreboard in. Up they go. Hudson's in there with mine. It goes to Martello. A quick kick from Martello. Oh, one behind only. Great mark by the policeman behind the goal. Manzi's off. John Manzi started off on the wing, has gone off, and Rodney Golf has come on to replace him. Well, a fresh youngster could do a lot of good for St Kilda. Their confidence must be dented uh, in this final quarter. The mark taken there by Ray. Oh, Goldman's in a bit of trouble as Wilson comes through. Here comes Stephen Ray after it, but it's taken by Rice of Hawthorne. Rice of Hawthorne in the woods and a half forward. Up they go. Martello's there, taken by Scott. Scott gets his kick. It's a hurry one down forward. A big pack racing after it. Knocked away by Colling. There's a chance for Judson. Matthews is in there doing battle with him. Matthews, a hand pass out into no man's land. Taken by Ma, however. Ma now running along along that flank, kicks in towards the goal square, they set themselves, Cowboy Neal says to Rodney Gold, leave it, it's mine, and the Cowboy marks. Neal, where's he going to come? He's coming along the member stand flank, he's kicked not a particularly good one, a chance for Pays, but he fumbles it, however, he's forced over the boundary line by Leon Rice, there'll be a throwing. Hawthorne, seven points in front, seven points in front. There they go, knock away by Beck down to Crimmins. Crimmins now blazes away, he's well offline, over the line, on the full of goes, and St Kilda will take the result in free. We are getting pretty dark, hard to see the stopwatch. 13 and a half minutes, 13 and a half minutes into the final quarter. There's Dickrich of St Kilda with the ball. A big fella now, kicks into the centre, a chance for Breen, and Breen marks all right. Will St Kilda come back, across it goes to Galt. Galt now a long one down towards Davis. Moore's after Davis. Davis is marked. No doubt. No shadow of doubt. Davis is marked. There's Alan Jeans up off his coach's bench. And Davis could kick this. He's 50 yards out. Kicking down to the Richmond end. He's able to kick it. It's on its way, but it's not going to find the distance. They fly. Down to the ground it comes. A scramble for it. Umpire Peter Shield says, I'll ball it up. Well, you can see how close it is. About five yards out from the St Kilda goal. Bounce of the ball. Goal goes in there. Beck with him. It comes to Angus of Hawthorne. A short one there. Picked up by Alan Davis. Goes to hook it. But oh, great play by Moore. Smothered the ball. Picked up by Porter. Porter out to the half back flank on the other side. Trot knocks it away. But a free kick has been plucked out of this. Looks like it's going to Desmar. Bob Skilton. It's Desmar on a half back flank. Swings the ball down round towards the wing. But it's player stop for the moment. Umpire Peter Shields has given a 15-yard penalty. You see Shields there calling Stuart Trot back on the mark. Desmar's had a great number of kicks on the wing today. Played on at almost every opportunity, but he has been driving the ball forward for the Hawthorne side. Here he is now. Desmar now on the wing position. Kicks a long kick down over the half forward line. It's Hudson up high. He can't take the mark. His opponent Lawrence comes out in defence. Drives it down where Desmar coming down gets it. It's smothered by Ross Smith. Out towards Kevin Heath who fumbles it. It's recovered by Stuart Trott. And he kicks down a Theodore but he can't hold the ball and Harkin will clear for the Hawthorne side. It's up to
towards centre half forward. Don Scott can't take the mark. It's Warren's in, in the man. He knocks it back towards Galt. Galt kicks it off the ground. It goes out. Vasenko drops that ball. The pack are oh. forming. Nobody can get it, but it'll be a free kick to Vasenko of St Kilda. Neil Vasenko. Half back flank for St Kilda. Goes straight up the centre of the ground. It's Green on the back of the pack. He can't hold the mark. It comes down towards Pays. In, in comes Leon Rice. Handballs across there to David Parkin. And Parkin does a drop kick straight towards Don Scott. He whips it over towards Green. Bob, and it's great to see John McKennedy do a high-end fling there on the sideline. Uh, he jumped about 10 feet in the air. That was a sort of goal, a lucky goal, but a break that should give St Kilda a real fist in the stomach and a re reverse to Hawthorne. 16 and a half minutes of the final quarter gone. There's Moran of St Kilda driving forward. Moore and Davis doing battle once again. But more too good. Calvin Moore. Gee, it was only uh, 12 months ago he wanted to go back to a junior side down uh, the Bayway. And here he is playing in a grand final and playing magnificently. I bet our friends over there uh, in uh, Perth through TVW7 in Perth are enjoying this one. Our friends through uh, CDC7 Canberra, TNT9 uh, Launceston, ABS7 in Adelaide. What a thriller it is. Will Hawthorne take it out? Or will St Kilda come back and show a bit of that form that they showed in the third quarter? Maher tries a short one up towards Crimmins. Intercepted by Moran. Moran kicks a high one, doesn't travel a great distance. Picked up by Crimmins, who's really lifted his play in this last quarter. Down forward it goes, a chance for Pays. Couldn't quite get to it. Kenny's in there. Kenny picks up, he screws around, he snaps. It's close, I can tell you. Hayes almost took the mark, it came down, and a remarkable effort by Kenny to get that one. So it certainly was, Bob, and we you mentioned uh, Pays dropping the mark, St Kilda players are pumping the ball now, and just, that's a sure sign of tiredness. Another change of the forwards by St Kilda. 18 minutes into the final quarter of the 1971 Grand Final. Here's a chance now for St Kilda to go forward. But, uh, yes, that's a change, Green has gone back to full forward, Bonnie comes in, Bonnie kicks. He's put it through. Oh, St Kilda come back. Three goals to John Bonney. 18 and a half minutes gone in the final quarter. Well, Barras, it's not all over. Well, it certainly isn't, Mike, and that was a direct result of that switch because previously Alan Davis had been hopelessly outmarked by Moore in the air. With Breen there, there's a bit of height. At least the ball is either marked or can get to the ground, but not a clear mark to the opposition, Hawthorne. 11-10 to 9-9, that's the score. Back in the centre, the ball is bounced by umpire Peter Shields. There they go, ball knocked away by Scott. Not further or fell for Hawthorne. Lawrence is after it, but who's coming in from the side? It's Judson. Judson screws it around, but oh, Rice is standing there. Rice takes the mark, kicks it down for Kenny's mark. Kenny's mark. Over to Hudson. Hudson's back in the record. Quite right, Mike. You can't do that sort of thing. He had stop play. He had stop right. play. He's quite right. Well, right, no, Jeff Katz, what's the ruling? He's quite right. He had stop play. It's unfortunate for Hutch, but he had stop play. He'd blown time on. He'd blown time on. That's all that can be said. Oh, what a thrill it was. Well, Mike, it gives it For a moment. Kenny is 12 yards out, directly in front. Put it through. That's four to Kenny in this quarter. Oh boy, oh boy. 19 minutes gone of the final quarter of the 71 Grand Final. Hasn't Kenny played remarkably well, Ron Barassi, in this final quarter? Well, he's listed his game, he's packed three quarters of, worth of value, which he did not give in the first section, onto this last quarter. He's been a match winner. Fantastic. There's a change now, Ron, with Basanko going back onto Kenny and Colling being shifted out. 
Back in the centre, the ball bounced by umpire Peter Shields. Up they go, Scott gets a knock away. What a line harder player he is. Knocked further field for St Kilda, however, by Dittrich. Picked up by Bremner. Bremner down towards centre, half forward. Lawrence is waiting there, couldn't hold the mark. In comes Pays. But umpire Peter Shields has played a free kick to Barry Lawrence. It's 12 and 9. 19 points of difference in favour of Hawthorne. As St Kilda go forward, Trot has it over there. On the half forward flank on the outer side. Kicks up towards Davis. St Kilda travelling forward with ease as Davis kicks. He's put it through. This is not all over yet. Now, all 21 minutes gone. Tighten up on that occasion. Mike, it's not all over yet for sure by a long shot. But just the same, St Kilda can't go goal for goal because they're behind. They've got to get another goal now to give them heart perhaps break through that 12 goal barrier which is in front of them 21 and a half minutes into the final quarter Jeff Crouch and the ball in the centre with umpire Shields who's done an extremely good job in the 71 grand final there they go Hawthorne going forward through Heath it's high in the air big Bex in there punched away by Page Cribbins takes it away though little Magsy Cribbins a good pass towards Teddy but nipping in there was Pasenko who's taken over Kenny from Colling Pasenko has moved on to Kenny Sanko kicking out towards the member stand wing. Looking for Stephen Ray down here. Rice from behind. Punches it away. Through comes little Ross Smith, the St Kilda skipper. And over the line it goes in front of the smoker stand for a throw in. Can St Kilda come back? 13 points the difference. Boy, oh boy, what a corner from Hawthorne. Here we go. Scott in there. Bit of a push out to Gulp. And it, yes, yeah, a push out from to Gulp. I said that. Rodney Gulp. You saw a shot of John Kennedy before. A moment ago, it was all jubilation. Now, a few worries creeping in. Oh, Dippert's got a shot in the back. Not seen by the umpire. That's the luck of the draw. Calvin Moore with the ball. Moore now, up towards centre, half forward. Hudson moves in. Goes up by his mark. Hudson is marked. He's kicked three goals. He's equal Bob Pratt's record. Oh, but he's a heck of a long way out. This would have to go 70 yards. Up he comes. 70 yards to go through, I mean. It's on its way. It's going to drop on the edge of the goal square. No mark. Up goes Big Beck. Gold goes up with him, taken by Kitty. They're on to Kitty, though. He can't get his boot to the ball. It's forced over the boundary line for a throw in in the forward pocket for Hawthorne on the member stand side. Up the scoreboard end. Throw in takes place. There they go. Where's the ball going? Taken by Moran. Moran's kick is a hurried one. Goes to Lawrence. Lawrence forces the ball out to the outer flank. Oh. They're racing for Trot and Ma. Trot gets in front. Kicks the ball over the boundary line. It's on the half forward flank for Hawthorne now on that outer side. Wait for the throw in as Jeff Crouch takes up description. Here's a throw in on the half forward flank for Hawthorne. Big Scotty gets the knockdown. It comes towards Wilson. Wilson and Elliot going in. Elliot's been a very quiet player. They call him the quiet man. And he's been a very quiet player the last two quarters. Another throw in on the half forward flank for Hawthorne. Out of sight of the ground. Up goes Scott once more. Takes the knockdown. Mars in there. So too is Trot. Trot who was pretty heavily knocked about the second quarter or third quarter. And he hasn't seemed to recover in this last quarter. Hawthorne still 13 points in front. Not long to go. Quite still time for St Kilda to get up there. It'll be about six minutes, Jeff. We're 24 minutes exactly into the final quarter. And Big Carl goes up with a big knockdown. He's trying to lift his side. There's his other number 10, Ray Wilson, coming for Hawthorne. A boot off the ground. Play on the call. Trot picks up. His kick going further afield. A big punch back by Moore of Hawthorne. And the punch goes towards the boundary line. Trot's in there, but it's over his head, on, over the line. Ron Barassi, you've been through eight grand finals as a player. How tired would those fellows be? Very, very tired, Michael, but it's amazing how you can find something. Elliot now forces the ball out here towards Pays. Pays eventually traps it, tackled by Rice. Pays gets his kick in towards centre half forward. Waiting there was Bustle, and Bustle marks at the true centre half back position. Almost into time on. Kick now from Bustle, goes deep to the wing position on the outer side. All Mark comes forward. The proof of Ron Barassi's statement that they're tired. Mar uh, let the mark spill right or bounce right off his chest. Over to the boundary line it goes, and there'll be a throw in. Midway between the wing position and half forward flank for Hawthorne on that outer side. Scott and Dittwich go in. Neither gets a tap down. Wilson cleverly knocks the ball forward. Trapped by Elliott. Elliott back to the wing position on that outer side. Through they come. Green appealing for the free kick. It's picked up by Davis. Davis swings it in there. There's nobody home. Oh, and coming through like a train is Stevenson. Hawthorne bounces it, loses it. Picked up by Stephen Ray's, held by the legs. And umpire Peter Shields says, I'll bounce it. Clubbing the ball in. 
Bounce of the ball. Up goes Galt. Galt knocks it away. Knocked away by Smith. Taken by Pays. Pays down forward. Out by come to meet it. Nobody able to hold the mark. Green's there. Green along hand pass across here to Travis Pays. Pays hooks it around. Minot has the chance. Up they go to the ground it comes. Taken by Bremner of Hawthorne. Bremner to the wing position on the member stand side. Rice is racing for it here. Rice is held, but it's called play on. Rice breaks clear for Hawthorne. He kicks downfield. In they come for the ball. It's knocked away, however. It's kicked forward by Vesenko. Vesenko running through. Kicks up towards centre half forward. But waiting there is the Hawthorne skipper, David Parkin. <laughs> but I think he fell over more from tiredness than anything else. More from acting, I think, Mike. 15 yards too. Well, Bobby Skill, what a great grand final it's been. A great grand final, Mike. And what a great game this chap has played. David Parkin, a wonderful leader for the Hawthorne side. Parkin drives the ball down towards the half-forward line. Up they go. It's over the back towards Dedrich. He kicks it further around the wing. Out comes Minot and Heath, both racing for the ball, but it beats them both over the line and out of bounds on the wing position, member side of the ground. 26 and a half minutes of the final quarter of the 1971 grand final gone. Up they go. Scott gets it over the back. Wilson and, uh, comes out to Bremner. Bremner kicks it wide and Matthews comes in, takes the mark and now plays on. Drives the ball round towards Maher. There's Maher, traps the ball. Swings it in towards the goal square. It's going over the top of it. Get it. On a slight angle, you should want to be able to kick the goal. Bobby, the police moving into position all around the boundary here. Hudson has got three. He's equal Bob Pratt's record of 150. Will he put this one through? How he must feel. Oh, he's no more than eight yards out. He should kick it. Up he comes. He kicks. Oh! Concentrating so much, he went into the man on the mark. Boy, oh boy, are you getting thrills here through Channel 7. Our director, Alf Potter, has a missed a thing in the 1971 Grand Final. And our cameramen, we've got to give them credit. Well, you... <laughs> unbelievable. Trot now with the ball. He kicks into the man, but the ball is coming back. Trot now to take his kick. Goes forward, up they go, it's taken by Bonnie. Bonnie has some Kilda running around. Bonnie kicks down forward, Green has to sit here. Up he goes, Green comes out with the ball. Green into an open goal, yes! It's third. It's Green's third. Seven points of difference, will I be right? Seven points of difference at the... 28 and a half minute mark into the final quarter. There's Des Ness, but you saw the grimace, the anguish, the pain on his face. Alan Jeans, Des Nesbitt's chairman of selectors at St Kilda. Back in the centre. Can the Saints get out of it? Up they go. Scott knocks the ball away for Hawthorne. Taken by Crimmins. Crimmins gets a hurried kick forward. Taken by Matthews. Matthews a hand pass to Hudson. Hudson going for a run. He steadies. He kicks. Oh, my God, he's missed it. Oh, look at him. on the full. Ron Barassi, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. Like you wouldn't, you just, in a nightmare, you wouldn't put down a strip like that from Hudson. I don't think that he's destined to break that record somehow. There's John Kennedy. He's more worried about Hawthorne winning this than Peter Hudson's record. It's... Words fail me. Words fail me. Angus with the ball. Angus has got the ball. You know what? Angus about to put Hawthorne forward. There's a the kick into the goal square. It's through, I think. No, it's been marked just inside by Galt. Mike, I think there might be an explanation of it. I think Hudson was in two minds with the hand pass, which he should have done and would have done normally. And thinking of the record too, I suppose. Galt now kicks out to the member stand flank. Through they come. Here's a chance for Stephen Ray. Over he goes. He'll be a oh, trip. A trip. Free kick to Stephen Ray. What a dramatic. Uh, well, what two dramatic moments we've had. Peter Hudson, twice missing golden opportunities to break the record. Up towards uh, Alan Davis. It's on the wing position now on the member stand side. It's taken by Bremner. Bremner drives forward and Scott has marked. 
Scott for Hawthorne on the half forward flank, and players are cramping everywhere. 30 and a half minutes gone of the final quarter of the 1971 Grand Final. There's Hudson, Lawrence guarding him. Scott about to drive Hawthorne forward. It's on its way. The players move for it. Up goes Hudson in there. Couldn't hold the mark, however. Comes down to Galt at St Kilda. He can't pick it up eventually. He does so. Galt now drives to the wing position on that outer side. Oh, no worries. Porter has marked. Porter now going forward to the half-forward flank. Wilson coming out to meet that ball. Trotters after him. Wilson gets his kick down forward. Out they come. Up goes Hudson. The ball forced away from him. Over the boundary line, there'll be a throw-in. Peter Hudson, throw in, up goes Beck, but across the top came Galt, knocked it away, a kick off the ground, sends it up here, a chance for Theodore of St Kilda, a hand pass to Elliot, Elliot now down towards centre half forward for the Saints, up they go, no mark, ball almost came out with a green, goes down, ball taken by Bonnie, Bonnie getting out of trouble, oh beautifully play, and Bonnie kicks, but the ball will be brought back, a free kick, still... Seven points of difference in favour of Hawthorne, and we've been playing, goodness me, 32 minutes into the final quarter as Moore takes his kick. Born out of the wing position on that outer side. Up they go, no mark. In comes Wilson for Hawthorne. Wilson picks up. He drives down forward now. Here's a chance. They fly high, no mark. Or will it be paid to Vasenko? Yes, umpire Peter Shields is paying the mark to Vasenko of St Kilda. Vasenko takes his kick. Goes straight up the ground, players move into it there. Pushed across to Judson. Judson surrounded by Hawthorne players, but he'll get a free kick. Hard way to get it, but he's got the free kick. Judson, time running out for the Saints. It's a long quarter, this one. Judson takes his kick. Goes to the flank position on the outer side. The sun comes out as the ball hits the ground, and Heath sends it back to the wing position. Simon goes! Simon goes! Hawthorne are premiers, 1971. Hawthorne are premiers and the final scoreboard here reads, let's have a look at it, as John Kennedy is being hugged and congratulated. And the final scoreboard, Hawthorne 12, 10, 82, St Kilda 11, 9, 75. Well, there you find... John Kennedy being cheered off. What a sight. How relieved he must be. Ryan, it was a pretty close one for him. It was, uh, Mike. This is, I mean, the tradition of the last 10 grand finals just about here on the MCG. A close one, a tight finish in which they had the crowd roaring. Here's John Kennedy being patted by his play, being hugged and kissed with no reservation. That's a, a lovely sight to see. Look at those players. They're absolutely exhausted, Mike. It was a hard, tough match. Peter Hudson there with John Kennedy. How in the name of goodness he missed those goals is beyond me. Well, that's it. You think, uh, I'm not a great believer in fate, Mike, but a thing like that, that's right. that, that, that the sort of day... It, he wasn't meant to kick that. It must have been. As simple Perhaps as that. Been, okay. We'll have a look at that final scoreboard again. Alf, show us that scoreboard, will you? Thanks, Alfie boy. Hawthorne, 12, 10, 82. St Kilda, 11, 9, 75. Hawthorne are premiers in 1971. Well, Bobby Skilton, comment from you. A great effort by Hawthorne, Mike. St Kilda looked all over winners after their wonderful third quarter. And uh, it looked how far St Kilda at that stage. But in five minutes, Hawthorne had kicked three goals. The change of Ketty to full forward placed a remarkable change on this game and what a wonderful effort by that Hawthorne side to come back as they did in that in that final term. Every Hawthorne player rose to the occasion and uh, the way that Don Scott lifted himself in the centre, there's David Parkin there that was just in the screen and uh, Parkin was a wonderful leader for his side. There he is there, you can see a very happy boy with Des Mar and uh, you know how great they are to be so happy. The St Kilda boys, well they fought the game right out but uh, it was all Hawthorne in the final term. Matthews went to a half-forward flank, rose to the occasion. It was a team effort by that Hawthorne side. A very happy Hawthorne side. And look at St Kilda there now. You can see the dejection on their faces. Look at Barry Breen there. The whole Hawthorne uh, St Kilda side 
um, you know, feeling very despondent as at three-quarter time, I'm sure they felt they had this grand final in their keeping. Well, there's no doubt about it. I thought at three-quarter time, St Kilda were going to go right on with it, but, well, one must give credit. The Premiers for 1971, you can see Hawthorne, Hawthorne 12, 10, 82, St Kilda 11, 9, 75. 